All right. Happy whatever day of the week it is for you. And welcome back to another episode of the Eclectic Soundtracks podcast. I think this is uh, episode 40. You know, today we actually have the pleasure of chatting with the very wonderful Mr. Jelly Ellington. Jelly originally hails from Asheville, North Carolina. He took an early interest in music after being exposed to it in Los Angeles. And he began playing classical guitar at the age of seven and eventually gravitated toward electric guitar. We talk about a lot of things in this podcast. We talk about the recent snowpocalypse, uh, the effects of the pandemic on venues, a little bit of backstory on Jelly's gorgeous midi Les Paul. That's a guitar, not anything else, just in case you're wondering. We also talk about Netflix shows, stand-up comics, a whole bunch of other things as usual. We also talk about some of Jelly's ongoing projects. As always, we'd like to thank our friends at Godin Guitars, Tragen Guitars, Ernie Ball Strings, and Five Iron Woodworks. Be sure and check us out on social media, the Instagrams, the YouTubes, the Facebooks. We're also available on Spotify, whatever Google, Apple, all those other folks use for uh, podcasts, we're there too. So make sure and uh, give us a like, subscribe, favorite, whatever they uh, let you do there. All right, on with the show. Oh, we're on. Yeah. Now, I think it's number 40. I could be wrong. (laughs) <laughs> yeah i think so maybe we are here with jelly ellington austin austin based guitar player and jelly like i've seen you before we've chatted you know in passing but i don't really know a whole lot about you we haven't really chatted extensively so it's be awesome to, to chat and, and get to know a little bit more about you man are you from texas originally where are you from well i uh, just want to say thanks for having me man absolutely um, dude thanks for doing it yeah I'm uh, I'm originally from uh, Asheville, North Carolina. Oh, okay. And uh, yeah, the, it's a small mountain town over on the east coast. And uh, met some friends up in Boston. We formed a band, and we moved down to Austin with it. And um, I've just been down here ever since. Since um, shoot, I guess it was 2011, um, back when there was no traffic on I-35 all the time. So that was that was the beginning of the end. That's when things really started to. You were the you were the early exodus. Uh, yeah, man. man, it really, it really was like it was the Antones was off Lavaca and Fifth, and mm-hmm. um, you know, go and rock out, and sit in, and jam out with Vallejo, and just you know, it was just like a magical time, you know, just like mm-hmm. it was a, uh, you know, it's definitely different now, and it's still cool, but it was um definitely a just a different vibe, so I loved it. Yeah, man, 2011. Well, I think I actually did play through that year, and then 2012, mid that year, I kind of my my band disintegrated. <laughs> And for a little while, and I kind of took a had a hiatus of not playing for a few years, and then I've been kind of like full fledged back in for oh, yeah. until for four or five years until 2020 that ruined everything. But like, uh, yeah, dude, I've been to Asheville a couple of times, man. I love that place. That's a really cool place. Beautiful. It's really beautiful up there. It is, dude. It was like a um, it was one of those things like you don't really realize how beautiful it is growing up, and then then you realize as you're older, you know, parents are always telling you one day you'll you'll understand and. Um, I definitely do now. I mean, the best time to go is fall, you know, when the leaves are changing on mm-hmm. the Blue Ridge Parkway. And um, I have one of a song that called Sound of the Sea. It's just kind of a way that I see Asheville, you know, from a top, you know, the mountains kind of look like the ocean a little bit. So, yeah. That's the thing when I went there. Um, um, yeah, it's real. A lot of mountains and stuff out there. And one time... I think it, yeah, it was in Nashville. It was in that area. We uh, I played there with one band, and we stayed with this guy who was like a musician and promoter and stuff. And he lived in like they were almost like like houses, but connected like almost like really badass condos or something. But it was actually it was it was some old fucking like asylum, or at one point in history it had been like an asylum, and then who knows like a military hospital or some it had like all this like history and shit back to like the civil war. Oh, it was like shoot. super old. It was like really badass. But I remember like driving up to it in the middle of the night with this you know big van and a trailer and shit when there's no railing or anything on the side, and like on just on these going up these fucking mountains, dude. And I was like, well, we're about to die, you know? Like Holy it was shit, like dude. terrifying, man. And then they were like, yeah, it was like, oh, haunted this and that. I'm like, I don't give a fuck about ghosts. I don't want to roll off this goddamn cliff right now. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but, yeah. And the other time, like we, I, we stayed with a guy that was like, uh, and friends and like in a band with, with another guy that was in my band. And, um, we, 
it was like we were they were in the middle of nowhere. We were like staying with this at this guy's like parents' house, and he lives here now. But um, and I remember just driving out there, like, why in God's name would anybody live so the fuck far from anything? This is ridiculous. And it was pitch black, middle of night, couldn't see anything, <laughs> out in the middle of nowhere. And then like woke up the next day and walked out on the balcony and saw the view of all the mountains. And I was like, oh, I get it. I see. I mean, it yeah. was just like incredible, man. Yeah, really beautiful. Dude, you're crazy, man. That old insane asylum, I think I've been to the same one you're talking about. Um, it, and then it was a VA hospital. Really? So you, Yeah. Um, we used it's to like go there up on high- a mountain-ish, or, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah, it's a little bit off the beaten path. Um, it's near like a pizza we used to go to. But um, yeah, we used to go there as like middle schoolers and high schoolers. And we would always like kind of egg each other on like, who's going to go the farthest in? And, you know, like it was that kind of thing. Some of us wouldn't even make it in, you know. The, the weirdo goth um, kids the went there and had sex. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we hear these weird, weird groans. Um, yeah, oh, it was weird. turned on by ghosts. Yeah, it was weird. There would always be something like some, somebody would be throwing stuff at us whenever we would go there. It was so weird. We never know where it was coming from. So that kind of always oh, wow. was a little weird. But uh, Probably, yeah. yeah. Probably some poor old vet waiting to get seen, man. He didn't realize <laughs> yeah. the hospital got shut down. Yeah, still waiting, still waiting for the VA to check him in. So yeah, he's, he's still waiting, off throwing rocks. Yeah, he's still waiting, pissed off, throwing yeah. rocks at everybody. Yeah. Um. So. Well, now that we're on the subject of ghosts and weird shit already, like before we uh, started, you guys were talking about what is that documentary called, The Cecil Hotel? Yeah, it's What's like that called, all about. I think it's crime scene. Um, you know, something at the Hotel Cecil and. It's just something I ran across on Netflix, you know, because that's what we do nowadays. We write Texas Rift Challenge Rifts and we watch Netflix, you know. Um, and uh, it just was like this really haunting documentary. My bro, my brother lives out in L.A., so I'm always kind of checking up on it. Yeah, that's just a crazy one to watch. So um, the whole I guess this tourist was coming in from Canada and um, doing like this kind of trip where this hotel, it used to be this place that would just house, you know, convicts, people on skid row, um, murderers, whoever, you know? Oh, and that was um, what, what it did, or it was just a known place that you could go or that was their MO. They were like, Hey, if you're a fucking misfit psychopath <laughs> rooms here. Yeah. It was something that they wouldn't talk about, but they were, they were okay to be there. You know what I mean? Wow. Weird. But, uh, yeah, super weird, man. So, but it's a good one. It's a thrilling one. Well, this so. ruined my night. I know what I'm going to do. Man, I Netflix is the best, <laughs> but it's also the worst because yeah. once you get started, we had a guest, a long time great friend of mine that was on a, a few weeks back and we, uh, he started, he was like, oh, have you watched Cobra Kai? And I'm like, no, I haven't watched it yet. <laughs> and then I was like, I don't know. I try not to start new series and I got really into like, um, I mean, of course, I loved like Breaking Bad. I, the show Ozark, oh, yeah. I, I think, is badass. I like that one a lot. There's, there's like a couple, right? But I haven't watched, gotten into too many. And then I was like, well, I'll check it out. Dude, I was so fucked. I watched that thing like and like that's what I did over the winter storm, basically, is like laid in bed all day and watched Cobra Guy. <laughs> dude, yeah. I actually <laughs> think that show's badass. I like it's how awesome, like, dude. 80, I love 80s it. LA, you know, like I love that shit. Well, I love it, too, because they do a good job of kind of like poking fun at, like we were just talking about about like mm-hmm. i mean we we lose water not not to make light of the, the the storm situation that texas just had i mean there's so many people now suffering immensely no power no water is uncomfortable and horrible for so many people e- even at best even for the lucky ones of us that didn't have pipes burst and didn't lose power or something it was still sucked to not have running water but but it's also like man now i'm like sitting there going like you know, we just don't realize. And Vic was like, oh, yeah, we used to drink out of a garden hose. That's how we all rolled when we were kids. Right. And mm-hmm. now it's like you got to have your certain filtered water and you're there. And we're all very much like that. And it was funny watching the Cobra Kai thing, the way they kind of poke fun at the at the PC shit of nowadays. And that one dude's totally clueless. And every kid's like a pussy and a nerd. It's just really funny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's definitely some undertones of that for sure. So. Yeah. I mean, my wife gives my our dog water out of our filtered water now you know that's just the way it is you know oh man i dated the way this it is nowadays yeah i dated this chick in la who ate and her dog ate better than me dude like <laughs> she'd like make a fucking steak and the dog would get like the the prime shit you know <laughs> you get the choice, choice select. yeah 
<laughs> yeah, right. I'd be, I'd get like the fucking leg. You know, it's like you make a fucking Thanksgiving turkey. It's like you can have the wing. The dog's getting the breast. <laughs> I know. Here's a gizzard. Here's a turkey liver. <laughs> but I mean, you know, poor girl. She she was all, you know, she was one of those true L.A. people that was all messed up from the get go. I don't want to rag on her, but man, don't. Don't ever go to L.A. and date a stripper. God, talk about oh. dumb. Just not good. <laughs> Skunk, man. Yeah, it's bad. It's bad. But, uh, anyway. That's the, part, that's the part in your biography that everybody's just, that's in your autobiography. That's the part everybody's going to love. Though. Right. You know? Exactly. Like nobody cares. You know I mean? Nobody, like that's the thing. It's like with you on this podcast, we're going to have to get into the dirt under the fingernails. Nobody cares. Oh, so tell me about the goops. Boring. People are like, whoa, <laughs> that dude did heroin. Holy shit. You know, like. <laughs> That's okay, our culture. That's what we want. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look, are you in a are you in a porn somewhere or not? Is this going to get interesting? I don't care about your music. I know, man. It's so you, funny. You wrote how many top what, top ten hits? I, I don't care about that. You know? <laughs> yeah. Shoot, like here's the, the thing, right? If you were like, if you were like, oh yeah, man, I'm a. Uh, I have a song that was. I mean, maybe if you were in like a famous movie, but oh yeah, I did this and I did that. And here's what everyone does, right? They'll be like, oh yeah, I'll check it out. And I got to say, doing this podcast is super cool because it actually forces me to like do that. And I mean, I say forces me, but because you do that all the time, you have good intentions, but you're like, oh, yeah, dude, I'll check it out. Cool. And we're all promoting our stuff. But so is like a thousand other people. Right. So you kind of know and you can't get too you can't take it too personally when someone doesn't get around to your song or whatever. But on this, it's like Vic and I have this conversation a lot about like, we'll go listen to something it, like a lot of people I know or whatever. And I'm like. Oh yeah, send us a track, or and then I'll go do do a little research, listen to tunes, and like, dude, like every time we're just like floored, like holy fucking shit, like everyone like is so good, and like there's like I hear songs like every day that are like Grammy worthy, totally badass, amazing songs, and it's just like yeah. your next door neighbor living in Austin, Texas, playing the same the same shows, you know, and I'm and that's just, mm -hmm. I mean, Austin is an exceptional city, but I think that's in every city. I mean, there's just millions of phenomenal artists out there that just don't you know it's just um, yeah i don't even know what it is anymore to have mainstream success or it's such a convoluted thing i don't even know what it is right because it's weird yeah. to see like one people on you know tiktok or something like everyone has their 15 minutes differently now right but everyone's mm -hmm. but i mean i i don't know i mean i don't even know what i'm talking about um anyway when did you start playing guitar <laughs> oh no but to, to come off that though like for instance, this morning, you know, I was uh, listening to KOTX and on my way to where I was going, it was this Nane, this band Nane, they had this song always on my mind. Then when I was leaving today, this afternoon, there was Colors came on right off the bat, you know, um, Black Pumas. And I was just like, yeah, these are both Austin artists. And you're right. Like we are, we're so spoiled. And they're not just like cool songs or like hits, you know. They're, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, mainstream worthy, you know, I mean. It's, it's pretty cool, you know, like to just to know that and to see that on a daily basis, just listening to local radio. Not everybody has that, you know, and Jackson Hole, yeah. Wyoming, you know, they don't get to have that luxury, you know, so. That's great to see, yeah. especially like, but yeah, I, I kind of forget about Black Pumas, but they were just, I mean, they were nominated for several Grammys this year. And then Gary Clark yeah. Jr. Is obviously yeah. just been slaying and he's amazing. So it's really yeah. awesome to see. And there's always, I think, I mean, I guess Black Pumas is not really more. You know, they're they're more rock than blues or a little more, uh, you know, and, and Gary Clark Jr. is that, too. But he's rooted in the blues very much, obviously. And so I think a lot of things that come out of Austin, it's almost that's the expectation that it's going to fall into that that category. But one mm -hmm. thing I love about this city is like it's so eclectic. There is so much diversity in the music here, you know. Yeah, it's that's so true. And, I, you know, I think that's something that we as uh, people who live here get to enjoy. You know, that's kind of one of the still secrets, I think, that not the rest of the country knows about yet, you know, um, which I think is pretty cool, you know. Yeah, it's like running water. You t you end up taking it for granted, right? And yeah, and then when you don't have it, like, you're just like, holy shit, this sucks. <laughs> I know. And yeah. coming to Austin, I remember coming to Austin from, L you know, I was in L.A. a little while before, and... I didn't get out as much. I mean, I did some stuff, but LA is just kind of such a pain in the ass to go. I mean, we complain about going downtown Austin and dealing with I-35, but Jesus, that's nothing compared to fucking trying to go from the valley or a beach or something to fucking, you know, some bar on sunset in LA. It's, that's a yeah. nightmare. Like, that's <laughs> just, 
dealing it, it's just so awful you're like okay my favorite band ever is in town but i really want to deal with the fucking <laughs> the traffic <laughs> and the parking like austin is kind of a fucking mess now but it's tolerable and um but i came here and i was like as soon as i started kind of getting out and playing and um i was just like floored by the bands that i saw and i think one thing um that austin at least had and this i'm talking 15 years ago but you know um i see more now to, tribute bands and i know you got a zeppelin tribute band we'll talk about that and i understand why people do tribute bands i mean it's a it's one of the few ways you can really probably make money live right unless you're a huge act it's pretty hard to, to really make a lot a substantial income with original music right so but there was a lot of that in la back then and then i came to austin there was just such this like eclectic pool of of like underground bands so to speak but they were fucking amazing bands you know it's like mm -hmm. wow this is really happening here yep yeah so, i totally agree man on such a <laughs> such a high level man it really is so you came here in like 2011 when did you start playing guitar was that your first instrument what what got you in the music how did you start oh dude uh well speaking of la it was a los angeles guitar quartet um i was um they're a classical guitar quartet uh and I was in middle school and they played it in my middle school and uh, I was just something just, you know, innately just really hit me, you know, about it, you know, just listening to the nylon string guitar and seeing, just hearing how, how it sounded, you know, the colors of it. Um, and I was like, mom, we, I got to get a guitar, you know, that's where it started with me. was the Los Angeles guitar quartet um, when I was seven. So wow. yeah. And I studied classical guitar up until I was 14. And um, my friend, Stephen Walker, he brought over a, uh, uh, Mexican Fender, Fender Stratocaster and uh, started playing Over the Hills of Far Away and then um, you know the rest is history you know just see yeah. the blend of it was kind of a good uh, stepping stone for me because with Zeppelin it was um, it had such a classical edge to it so you know when I would when I would I would sit and learn Babe I'm Gonna Leave You and um, those really finger picking style sure. songs that yeah. kind of helped me transfer over to full on you know Heartbreaker riffs or whatever um, so that's kind of where it evolved for me, you know, it was, um, uh, class school to Zeppelin and then just on to other things, you know? So, yeah. That's interesting. You say that about Zeppelin because I've always been a huge fan of, uh, not that the riffs aren't great, but of Jimmy Page's acoustic style yeah. playing and that those types. So that's one of my favorite riffs, you know, and that kind of stuff mm -hmm. I absolutely love, man. And yeah, I think about classical etudes and little pieces that i've learned you know on the nylon and stuff years back yeah. and like that's very much stylistically i always yeah. thought that too such a like a bluesy thing but it really is a classical type progression like totally really you know yeah. it's not blues yeah. you know yeah so that's just the what well, you know i mean zeppelin has many facets so that was just one of the ones that i you know that i really was turned on to a lot you know and um my dad you know he would always jam cashmere and he got this convertible uh one of those honda s2000s for fun we would go up and drive around Asheville, you know on the parkway and just blast cashmere and you know just so you know you're, yeah. you're talking about the uh the p diddy version right yes yeah that, that was lit dog. <laughs> it was lit dude i was like i was so uh, mad when that came out like i don't have a problem with like like run dmc and uh you know aerosmith that was rad dude and like i don't have a problem with like people taking stuff and doing whatever with it and collaborating, but, but not when you suck. And I know I'm pissing on <laughs> P Diddy and I'm going to piss on him because that shit was lame, dude. He basically took this. And I was so disappointed with Jimmy Page. It's like they took this goddamn great iconic riff and he basically just sat there and went, uh-huh, uh-huh. I was like, motherfucker, this is yeah. embarrassing. <laughs> Pity that he must have some good drugs for him that day. Like, hey, man, uh, by the way, I want right. to uh, make cashmere into this. Oh, yeah, yeah, sounds, sounds good. This old, uh, you know, some old dark shit from the 60s he had sitting there and jimmy couldn't resist didn't didn't he do the uh uh the police song what was that it? was like uh, a huge hit i think that's what blew him up because it, yeah. before that he was always like a business dude and he was i think he worked in some capacity or maybe he had a label that's where was uh, it like management or something or I think maybe he even had a label, label. that that okay. uh what's his name notorious big got on and all that oh that's right and that yeah. dude actually had you know some skills and then and yeah, then he died you. and and then P. Diddy blew up from that, you know, whatever oh, that yeah. song was. I'll be that, that was, you. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, be <laughs> instead, you. I'll be watching you, but let's yeah. just change this one word. Yeah, we'll change one word and, and make it suck oh, more. I didn't even realize that. That is crazy. 
I didn't realize that was sampled. Wow. Yeah, yeah totally, man. Um, it's funny how like shitty bands and artists. I'm just gonna oh. piss on some motherfuckers on this episode. <laughs> like, like it's funny how shitty. Ba- like, think about Limp Biscuit. One of the and if you like Limp Biscuit, then I I don't understand why, but um, I <laughs> it's one of the worst bands ever. I think, and all and it's like, dude, their own their biggest success was other people's music, like Faith by George Michael. And Behind Blue Eyes by The Who. Those were like their biggest hits. I remember playing open mics back then and people were like wanted to hear that song. And it was an wow. okay cover except for like a dumb bridge they put in there or something. But like, uh, yeah, it was just weird. You know, it's like, I think that really is, uh, and I don't have a problem with covering other people's music. I think it's awesome to pay homage and everyone's done it, right? The, Be- the Beatles, everybody. So, but at some yeah. point, it's like, if you can't write your own shit, that's worth a damn. When you're only like, you're only... <laughs> When your only contribution is a song that's like break stuff, <laughs> pussy, <laughs> like that's that's Limp Biscuit, like break stuff, pussy, yeah, don't, man. Don't forget I'm, the, I'm, I'm tough. Yeah, <laughs> I'm a bro. I was gonna say, don't forget the uh, the clever titles, the album titles. Was it Chocolate Starfish? Oh, that band I, sucks I so bad. I remember this kid one time was just like, dude, you got to hear this band, Limp Bizkit. And I was sitting in his truck and he played a song and I was just like, ugh, get me out of here, dude. This is, and I'm not one of those guys that only likes stuff from the nineties and like, doesn't like, I, I love like, there's all kinds of like pop music that's been coming out over the last several years that I, I think is great in all kinds of bands. I'm not one of those, I hate everything that's not from my high school days or something, but I guess Limp Biscuit was like right on the, the tail of that or something, but. Yep. I feel like that band for the, to me in my mind they're like the poster child for like the destroying like everything good about what mainstream rock was like they fucking buried it in like a foul <laughs> one foul swoop man and we've been trying to recover ever since just buried it so other than Limp Biscuit, what are your big influences? Like, what are bands that you... <laughs> that suck if someone, like, po- pops into this podcast right now. They're like, oh, God, Jelly. That's the, that's exactly how things happen, too, right? Misinformation. And then someone would hear that one soundbite and be oh like, God. oh, that dude, Jelly, loves Limp Biscuit. Yeah. It's like his favorite band. I heard him say it on a podcast. All completely inaccurate. Oh, my God, yeah. Hawthorne Heights, Limp Biscuit. Oh, my God. Ha- what is- <laughs> so... <laughs> I love Hawthorne Heights, dude. I'm just I don't know if that's a joke or real because I don't even know what that is. I'm going to Google it's, it. It's, it's just a band name that uh, it was a band that used to exist in, I think, the 90s or early 2000s. And I think they were like a, just a pop punk band. So, oh, they look like a bunch of sissies for sure. See, here's, <laughs> yeah. here's the thing. A yellow since, card. Dude, since I've been watching Cobra Kai, like now that's how I want to talk. Like I want to be like, look at those fucking nerds. Yeah. Pussies. Birds, man. Get a Dude, I, was listening to, I was listening to some old, uh, and I don't know if he's still like that, and maybe that's why he built, I, I don't know, I mean, what the deal is with Joe Rogan, but like I, I went, I was listening to like some of his super early podcasts just out of curiosity, and I think he's got some great comedy from back in the day and stuff. I didn't know that. A lot of people didn't know that, I guess, in the beginning because he's known for the, you know, fear factor and, and then UFC and shit, but like... uh Dude, that guy would just say anything. It was like I was almost like early podcasting, like Howard Stern. It hit, it felt like it was the same kind of thing. You had this guy that was just like would say whatever, and he'd go off on these like really kind of intellectual rants. But yeah. but he but at the same time he'd just be like just saying like you know faggot and shit that you can't say right. Like even like saying that I'm like oh god I shouldn't have said that. Oh no, but <laughs> that dude just says it like in like every other word. They're like that's gay and like that's how like we grew up. Yeah. Like it wasn't like saying that was like you were being directly offensive to somebody, right? It was just like saying that's stupid. I mean it's just a, a, a different way of using that word slang wise. But yeah. I was like wow that's so cr- it's so weird. Like I mean that was ten years ago and even in the last ten years I'm like that is. uh unacceptable behavior joe rogan <laughs> yeah i don't know i like how has he not been canceled right how is this i guess he's not okay. hosting any major shows so it doesn't well, matter he's got his own show yeah he's he's a, he's his own man right he doesn't work for anybody someone probably tried to cancel spotify when they got him they, on. oh they totally did the employees yeah. yeah the employees oh, really? yeah the That's, employees revolted and they went and told uh ownership that they that they should ban rogan for um what was it? Being a oh, of course, Alex Jones was part of that, you know, right? But um, he might have had, who was it? 
there's a doctor. Her, she wrote articles for Playboy, but she, you know, she was, she's, she has a book out about the whole, um, you know, transgender thing going on. I don't even know oh, enough about I, it to, to talk about it. You know, but, um, but I mean, she had a really interesting podcast and, you know, talk about, you know, how it stems for some people, how it is for some people. And you know, it's just, I think that was one of the things that people got mad about, but uh, I don't remember exactly. There was something. People can't remember what they get mad about anymore. I don't know. <laughs> There's some people I, that are just like, I, I have to be, what can I be mad at today? Cause I need to be mad at somebody. I need to cancel somebody guy. If I don't fucking cancel somebody by noon, I'm going to lose my shit. Yeah. <laughs> I don't unfollow someone by noon. It's going to, it's over. <laughs> are you uh are you much into like podcasts and talk radio or any kind of that stuff or are you uh does you kind of stay with the music man I, I roll with the music mostly but i love uh i love doing this kind of stuff though i love just kind of hanging out and talking and um just kind of free form you know where it's not yeah. so so many boundaries to it um you know doing like radio segments and stuff it's you know so quick and you gotta just think so fast and everything so it's nice just to kind of have a normal human conversation about weird netflix shows and right you know, stuff yeah like on radio that. it's like okay i got like two minutes to plug my shit what do i uh don't forget this uh, don't forget that yeah yeah but um i mean I've, I've i definitely check out the joe rogan podcast every now and then so like you know the elon musk one and um i just think it's interesting all that's going on in austin with just yeah everything that's going on with Tesla and him being here. And I just think there's so many great things happening here. So it's pretty um, cool. It's pretty exciting to be. Um, I mean, a lot of people of course are not going to, you know, no one wants to see their city overrun by as you know, Charlie Hodge used to say the Johnny Dallas coming in and putting up the condos everywhere. Did you ever listen to that guy, Charlie Hodge on KLBJ? Uh, I yeah, love, oh yeah. I love Charlie Hodge, man. He was great. Oh, yeah. Um, and then he started a podcast and I never listened to it. So if Char no one listens to Charlie Pod's <laughs> podcast, no one's listening to our ass, but oh well. But we're not even well, famous. I saw him at uh I saw him singing karaoke at Oh yeah, he used to do that. Was yeah. it uh was it it was fucking common uh common interest, I Common bet. interest. Yeah. Dude, he was drunk off his ass. Like almost nice. like falling down, barely standing drunk, just getting up there Ooh. and just singing wailing karaoke. Okay. It, it is great. <laughs> his sidekick, Matt Sadler, I think is his name. I used to see him um, at like Cap City once in a while uh, mm -hmm. doing stand up and stuff. Man, Cap City was great, dude. I did like some open mic stand up a couple of times. I have so much respect for comedians. Oh, That's such man. a, that was a you, you got to have fucking balls, man, to do that shit. And, dude, uh, seriously. But it's they so, it's so that fascinating. Down it's still, last year, it right? did close down. And one awesome thing about Rogan coming here is, man, he's going to open up a comedy club. He, not you he know, just going back and that. listening to those podcasts from of his from ten years ago, and he's talking about how much he loved Austin. He was always talking about how much he loved Texas huh. and Austin. And the whole reason I found out about him because I remember seeing a, him on TV years ago, and then Fear Factor, and I was just like, "Ah, oh, this guy's a fucking douchebag." And then I saw his comedy and I was like, holy shit, this dude's like really intelligent. And I saw it was at like Velveeta room or something. It was him and Doug. I saw mm. segments oh, from Stan him Hope. and Doug Stanhope. Yeah. And of course, Bill Hicks always used to come here and, and, and they're all kind of in that same league of, you know, um, I don't know what you would call it, but it's, it's definitely not good old boy, you know, blue collar comedy. It's, it's that and a little more in, in you know, um, exquisite. Kind of yeah, intense and and a little more a lot a lot of social commentary, but mixed in with really right. foul shit, almost like an, the way South Park does things. I think nice. Um, <laughs> yeah, and I love those. I love those guys. They're like heroes of mine. You know, just as much as any musician and stuff. I have so much respect and admiration for those guys and what they do. And it's a hard job. I mean, yeah, I think it's no. Of course, those guys are on like you know all boozed up and on coke and shit, man. That's fucking hard shit to do. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you're having like a bad day and like, you don't want to talk to anybody, then you got to go out in front of like 20,000 people. If you're John Mulaney, it's like, geez, how do you yeah. muster up enough to do that? You know, like I just kind of hide behind my guitar, you know, and hope everything goes right. You know, these guys are just out in the open. Exactly. Well, and also if you have a band, I feel like that with music in itself, like if you have a band, there's like, and I also, the bigger the crowd, people, oh, aren't you terrified of like, not that I played for huge crowds, but like, I'm like safety in numbers. If I'm on stage with a band and, and there's a bunch of people there and there's a bunch of energy, dude, I, I am like, it's so exhilarating and awesome. I'm like, I feel confident and great. Right. But if it's like, 
me with my acoustic guitar singing about my personal shit for like one person in a coffee shop. I'm, I'm so fucking terrified and like yeah. uncomfortable. You know what I mean? Yeah. You just got to go to a different place, man. Yeah, for sure. Well, you shouldn't play acoustic Limp Biscuit songs, maybe. Oh, is that what I'm doing wrong? <laughs> I mean, they're, they're, to be fair, they're not actually Limp Biscuit songs, though. That's the thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man. There was that one song by the Chili Peppers I used to like. And then it became that song, uh, Come My Lady, Come, Come My Lady, You're My Butterfly, Sugar <laughs> Baby. I was like, wait a minute. What was that that is a, that? That's a Chili Peppers. That's Instrument. what's fucked up, right? It's like so many people like, what? will hear this music and not know who the original belonged to. And I think there's a way it can be done right. And I, I don't, and I have, especially after kind of like learning a little about, about the art of it and how it started and when it started, I, I have like respect for good DJs and true, you know, guys that can manipulate things and create and remix new things. But, but, in, and use samples correctly, right? Because a lot of bands, you know, from, Beastie Boys to Mr. Bungle use samples in ways that I really like, but but they can also they kind of have their own thing, right? And I yeah. mean, even Beastie Boys can like play instruments and do shit. They're not just like you know, and they, and they were pretty early on doing that stuff too, you know. Like I mean, they sampled Zeppelin, right? Didn't they do the when the Levee Breaks? Wasn't that one of their samples? Maybe I think they did Maybe some so. Zeppelin stuff. But I know they yeah. got an instrumental album out too. Beastie Boys do, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. I can't. I can't remember what it's called. That that other song you mentioned, uh, "Crazy Town," I think. It was, yeah. Oh, <laughs> it, it reminded. I don't know if you ever saw Silicon Valley on HBO, but they had a. Uh, they have this, uh, you know, very wealthy investor, right? Total douche. You know, has the, uh, the 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 jeans that have all the embroidery on the back and the big buttons and drives a flashy car. And every time he pulls up, he's playing like crazy town or some sort of song. Yeah. Like that. Well, that's Mike judge. And that reminds me of, of, uh, yeah. Office space, right? That was the movie yes. office space where that dude in the office beginning, space. he's fucking like jamming out to all this oh. hardcore rap, this little nerdy white guy. Oh, yeah. And then like these black guys pull up, and he like turns it down and he's just sitting there and shit. Dude, oh my god, that's one of the best movies ever. That that movie is fucking awesome, man. Lumberg, man. Lumberg. I fucked Lumberg. <laughs> he's got like, oh, got the he's got his coffee him. cup with the leg in the air. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. A dream he has, you know. Yeah. <laughs> like that's. He's all sweaty. <laughs> coffee cup. Yeah, Peter. <laughs> yeah. Dude, that is that uh, is a classic, man. Report. Oh, uh, that's funny. Um, yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. Um, who, who plays that character, Vic, that you were talking about? Because I've only seen like one or two episodes, but I know it's got, I, I recognize some people in it. And there's that one tall, lanky, goofy looking dude who was in the office for a for a bit in the later seasons is in that show. You know who I'm talking uh, uh, about? Jared, the Jared dude from The Office. Yeah. I think oh, his name was Jared on The I Office. Think I know. Jared, I know which one you know who I'm about. talking about. Yeah, yeah. He's got the big pointy nose. Who's yeah. That fucker's name on that show. Ah, uh, shoot! You know, waste a lot of podcast time now sitting here thinking <laughs> of this. Mike Judge is an Austin guy, though, right? Yeah, he yeah. is. Yeah, that's cool. Zach Woods is uh, the actor's name. Okay, that's that. Yeah, Zach Woods. That sounds right. Gabe, yeah. that's his name. Oh, Gabe. Gabe. Yeah. Yeah, man. Fucking Mike Judge done some great stuff. I don't know what he's done lately. I guess maybe that show is that still a thing? Or that's 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 over just, now, right? Yeah, it just wrapped last last. See, last season five was the last season, so it's a great, it's a great show, though. I mean, I mean, I work in IT, and it's just, you know, it makes fun of that whole <laughs> West Coast, uh, Silicon Valley mentality. It's it's fantastic. Which I guess a lot of those guys are coming here now, right? Yeah, yeah. So you get to work with you get to work with those guys. Oh yeah, up yeah. close and personal. Up close and personal. Get to hang with Gabe. Listen to uh, Crazy Town. <laughs> oh, man. What are some of your big influences, man? I mean, Zeppelin, obviously, and we'll talk about... What is the Zeppelin tribute band called? Uh, Dancing Days. Dancing oh. Days. and Because there's a few of those, and I'm trying to think now. Jesus Christ. Um, I don't do my homework, obviously, but um, did you guys play during the pandemic? Did you play... Uh, we did a few you, shows. You played at... Um, empire control room a few months back yeah or no we did yes was that, yeah was that with um 
why can I not remember this dude's name? Awesome band. Pearl Z's in it. Uh, remember that? Oh, um, the Damn Torpedoes? No. Oh, no. They played that night, too. But I yeah. Thought maybe maybe that was just a tribute night. Maybe that was a different night than yeah, man, when uh, she played with um, she's got like two Cthulhu bands, right? or some shit. God damn it. <laughs> what did you say? Cthulhu? <laughs> no, like, Coo- oh, fuck me. What an ass. Oh, I give up. Anyway, I remember I remember you playing a show there. I remember seeing that. Um, and I guess you guys have... Yeah, they have tribute bands there a lot, right? And it's pretty cool, man. I, I dig that place. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn I mean, Torpedoes? I've seen that name a bunch. I'm a huge Tom Petty fan, but I've never seen cool. those guys. I imagine they're pretty badass. Yeah, I mean, Dancing Days, we just we like to do, you know, a couple of Austin shows a year. And when we can do a couple out-of-town dates, we do. Um, it's just an excuse for us all to get together as friends and drink some beers and play Zeppelin and... Um, Cause we're all we uh, we all have our own projects and stuff. Josh is Black Heart Saints. Right, right. Garcia does a lot of stuff. Loving Chaos and he's got his own band. Hours Quiet. And, um, you know I'm doing the thing with my project, so it's just it's just a fun thing for us all to get together and kind of pay tribute to the to the um hammer of the gods, you know. For sure. So, yeah, I know uh, Black Heart plays all the time in Houston, and and uh, Josh is yeah. from uh, Lake Charles. So you guys do the Houston? Yeah. You, you all do Louisiana shows as well? Yeah. We did, yeah. We did a really rowdy Louisiana show in uh, near Josh's hometown. That was a wild one, um, but it was super fun, man. Nice. Um, but uh, yeah, it's you know as far as influences go, though. I mean, um, I'm a huge Jeff, Jeff Beck fan, of course. Oh yeah. Um, and uh, I, you know, I, I'm a big Warren Haynes fan as well. He's an Asheville guy. Um, oh really? And, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I love, love you know, I just love all his work he did with writing with Greg Allman and his work with the Allman Brothers and his own group government mule mm-hmm. um and the whole i do a christmas channel an annual christmas jam and um the whole idea of it kind of spawned from um warren haynes does a christmas jam that i used to grow up going to you know as a little young child when they would i would be with my dad and maybe pass it moonshine and jars you know across the aisle you know uh, that's just how people did it there you know all night government mule would play, go on at like three in the morning after wow. you see all these amazing bands you know robert plant and allison kraus and Almond Brothers and um, just so many great groups, Galactic. And um, so, yeah, it just kind of came from now. He he does it for Habitat for Humanity, and I've always done it for just a nonprofit or a charity here from Austin Music Foundation to Central Texas Food Bank to um, for this year, we'll save our stages this past year. So, yeah. Mm. And that uh, was at Moon. Do you you always do it at Moon Tower? The Christmas Jam? Yeah. We do it. At, we've done it at one two one for the past uh, seven years, and then the eighth one was at Empire Garage. Oh, I, I, for some reason, I thought you would, that was at Moon Tower last year. I don't know why. Yeah, I know you played one to one a lot, um, and I was glad to see that at least that place is is uh, re- um, coming back. I guess I don't know if it's reopened or not because I guess it went under due to the pandemic, and then Greg. Yeah. I guess they sold it, right? Yeah. I think like the day after that they didn't get the grant that they should have gotten. He was like, yeah, man, that sucks, dude. That's a great um, place, man. Um, did you play, yeah. did you play the old one? Um, when they used to be downtown before they relocated? Yeah. So we had our first gig in Austin in this band. I was in called treetop sailors at one, two, one bar on fifth. I remember that name. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. And, um, we, uh, did a residency there with this great blues guitarist from Australia named Carl Morgan. And, um, yeah, we just had such a good time. Like it was such a good hang, you know. Just yeah, that was the magical days of Austin. You know, it had this cool rooftop, you know, bar that you could hang out at um, before and after the show, and you could just hang with people. And there was a um, always a great band playing. You know, I'd go and see uh, to Heebie Jeebies, um, go and play a great funk band, and um, pretty much any night. Any night, you know, you go see Alan Haynes rip up the blues, or um, you know, it's just it's it was one of those places, you know, that just. Um, just a really hit a great hidden gem for locals. Yeah, and then and then after the move, it's seemingly still pretty fucking hip, right? I mean, I, I yeah. see a lot of people I know and, and and names playing there all the time, and I love it, man. I love yeah. that place. I hope it's going to be the same. I imagine it will be the stage and everything. Great stage sound, just a cool layout. Oh yeah, for sure, man. Yeah, I hope I hope so too, dude. Um, I think it's under new ownership, so we'll see we'll see where it goes. You know, mm-hmm. what the new vibe is. So yeah. What are some other venues here in town that are some of your personal favorites that are hopefully still around? Oh, man. Well, I love, uh, I mean, Empire is also, I love Empire. The controller, man, the garage is always super fun. You know, pro lighting and just pro sound. Um, 
I love the parish a lot. Yeah. Um, I really like, uh, we even like doing like Saturday afternoon shows at Guero's. Um, those are really fun. Um, just kind of daytime sets that we do kind of in the heart of South Congress. Those are always super fun. Um, Why am I not placing that? Because I know what that. What, I'm trying to think. It's uh, like right across from. Home oh, the Slank taco place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah. That's an outdoor yeah. thing, right? Yeah, that place is awesome. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, man. They got I this always cool forget way. they have live music there. That's right. Yeah, man. They got this oak garden out outdoor area that's just really fun. So, and um, I just and I love Saxon Pub just for the sound, you know. Sure. And I, I go yeah. see David Grissom melt my face. I used to go there every Tuesday at six o'clock, you know, and just see David Griss Grissom melt my face, you know, for an hour. Um, yeah. So, you know, stuff like that it's for free, you know, and I'll just, it would just play. I used to love it. He would always, every residency night, he did it for like, you know, I don't know, seven to 10 years, just nonstop every Tuesday, even if wow. he was in Japan the night before, you know, fly back to Austin to do the residency. Jesus. Um, wow. man. He, I used to love it. He'd just be like, this is, this is a free show. This is local Austin, Texas right here. Like, so, you know, tip if you, you know, if you like what you're hearing, you know, and like, and it's like world class music, like we were talking about earlier. You yeah, know, world class guitar playing, and he has his own custom PRS. Yeah. So, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Know? Yeah, man. So uh, it's just you know I love I love that venue too. So yeah, Saxon's cool, and it's so small. It's crazy. Some of the acts I've seen there, like uh, um, seeing um, um, the Aristocrats, there was super fucking cool, man. I don't know if you've ever listened to those guys, Guthrie Govan and. Uh, uh, you ever, you yeah, ever heard of the Aristocrats? They're insane. I know Guthrie Govan really well. It, it's so um, good, man. I'll have to like shoot you a link of a tune. It, it's a it's a mind blowing. But I saw them there, and then Oz Noy played there with the with uh, what's the drummer that played for Letterman for all those years? He was a big session guy, really renowned. Oh uh, yeah, you know mm -hmm. what I'm talking about, right? Um, yep. Um, yeah, and that, and then like uh, Tony McAlpine, a lot of like fusion little you know type groups and stuff. But cool. yeah, such a cool little intimate room and you'll just see like world-class players play there. The Saxon's got a really, really cool for that reason, I think. And thank yeah. God, man, they, uh, same thing, right? They bear, didn't they get a bunch of donations or something that, um, cause like the government or whatever, or whatever bailout grant, it was like, well, the venues are suffering. Here's 15 bucks for the next six months. You know what I mean? And yeah. then fortunately, like a lot of community came together for a lot of these places, I think, and saved their ass, you know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I imagine so with Saxon. Yeah, that's definitely, it was hard. I mean, it's, it's, uh, I know, um, his, his name's Steve over at Empire. He's a, one of the head board members of NEVA, which is the National Independent Venue Association. And they've done great work throughout the whole country helping, um, get bills passed from Congress, that big bill to, you know, I think it was like some 15 billion or something more than that, um, to get, you know, funding to venues and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, we've had people right here in our hometown be leading the way for providing relief to these venues, you know. So, yeah. I heard uh, Ted Cruz was in Acapulco fighting for us. Getting, uh, yeah. Cancun. Yeah. <laughs> no, I know it was Cancun. I, I was, I was going to try to make some exotic worldly place, and then I was like, I don't know any. I've never been anywhere cool. Acapulco, another Mexico yeah, city. Wow. He, was, uh, he was harvesting sunbeams and bringing them back to Texas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like that. I, I been, man, the Ted I feel like the Ted Cruz fiasco was like the best thing that could have happened in a way because it gave us all something that we could all like uh get on board with like both yeah. hating and sort of like laughing at. Like the memes were have just been fantastic. I yeah. it was it was one of those things where I'm I'm thinking about it. I'm like, man, that that's that's pretty shitty, but at the same time, I think I was more mad that I didn't think about it myself and go somewhere. <laughs> I don't know, but do you have that option? Can you just can no. you just hop on a fucking plane and go to Cancun? Like most people can't do that, no, right? No. Yeah, exactly. So that right. that's the thing, you know. And here's my whole take on that is like and look, if you're like a rich person and you know, I mean, it's a it's just a shitty reality of life, right? Life is not fair for anybody and you know, and millions of people are starving in one place and you don't even think they don't even enter your consciousness and you know, whatever, whatever you got going. But if you, if you got the means to do it and all right, fucking why not? You're in a terrible fucking winter storm. Don't leave your poodle behind. That's bullshit. But get out of Dodge, go fucking to the can't, whatever. But when you're an elected official, 
that has been elected to office to serve the people and your state is facing the worst like winter storm crisis in its history that's just like dude you gotta like at least have the wherewithal to be like this probably isn't a good idea even if i really want to go do it and i don't want to help people right now like it's just bad politics and so to me i'm like when i look at that i'm like man that's like can you really trust a leader that has that little foresight in terms of like how he handles himself in that crisis? And then there's the damage control pictures afterwards, but that's too little too late. I'm like, fuck this guy. Let's get JJ Watt in the Senate, man. That guy actually gives a shit about fucking Texans, man. Every time shit hits the fan, JJ Watt does badass shit. Like that's the kind of guy that needs to be fucking running shit, you know, in the future. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think people place too much, um, you know, put their politicians on pedestals when they shouldn't, right? I mean, he, he basically pulled a Gavin Newsom, right? When Gavin Newsom was eating at that restaurant, like, was it French something? You know, no masks, yeah. you know, just. Oh, yeah. California, well, California I, lockdown. I, 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 yeah. And I'm not trying to like holy shit all over the GOP, but I mean, Ted Cruz is kind of a tool. I mean, but like <laughs> the whole thing with like, that I, I always find it's funny when you see those guys and he comes back wearing a fucking Texas man. It's just like double whammies because <laughs> it's like, first of all, you were one of these fucks that probably didn't even want to wear a mask. I'm just going to assume just seem, you know, one of Trump's oh, minions totally. that like, man, we don't need mask. And now you're wearing a mask after you fly to Cancun in the middle of a fucking crisis trying to come back with some Texas pride. Dude, it's really funny because even people that I know that like voted for Trump and are like Republicans were like, oh, blow that fucker's head off. <laughs> like people were pissed, man. Like if you were someone when your pipe burst and that's what your fucking elected officials do. And I'd be pissed, too, man. Yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't mean to meet this a political uh, thing. Uh, we don't. Eh, sometimes we get political on here. We talk about the whole. I'm glad you're comfortable with whatever, Jelly, because. Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, I completely agree. I think it was like you said, it was a sense of uh just community for us all just to team up against his wrongdoings just that was the only way to keep us on the same just how crazy that was you know yeah so. and, you're, and to your point Vic it's like I I do think yeah we put these guys on pedestals that we shouldn't and we put way too much stock into one person that's the president whether it's the president or the senator or what. but I think it's like the responsibility not only of what you're actually doing you know on the ground so to speak but you have a responsibility and an obligation when you're elected official like that to, to be I feel like, yeah, Yeah. to be better to, you should go out there, uh, you know, leading like if if you're a leader, right? A leader doesn't go in in the midst of a battle, a shitty leader goes and fucking cowers and goes, you guys go a good leader, fucking like Matthew Broderick in glory. Right? Like I was just thinking about that movie the other day. That is such a great movie. Have you you ever seen that movie glory with Denzel Washington and Morgan? Oh dude, that is one of the best fucking movies. Ever. So that, was, that was Denzel yeah. Washington's first Oscar, right? Yeah, supporting first actor. one of yeah. his first big oh. movies, 1989 Best Supporting Actor. Denzel's incredible in that movie, and Matthew yeah. Broderick's like the it's so basically it's about the 54th uh, Massachusetts, Massachusetts and the Civil War, Black Regiment or whatever, and and uh, you know and there's all this controversy and they're having to face all this racism even from Colonel their own Shaw. you know north northerners and then Colonel Shaw, Matthew Broderick's character is the leader in charge it's a great great movie man but and uh, well now i'll just ruin it for you and at the very end it's like uh they're in this big fucking battle where they're basically like facing certain death and matthew and we're all just laying there matthew broderick their flag bearer or whatever gets shot and he just grabs the fucking flag and charges you know what i mean and it's just like that rallies everybody you know what i mean and yep. that's what a good leader does and a good leader inspires and lifts people up he doesn't you know shit on people and then go fucking well, fuck you. Deal with it. I'm going to Cancun. You know. <laughs> yeah, I like how I like it when Paul. You know, like George Washington. He was a general. You know, or you know, just really big part of the army. You know, serving our country. You know, I feel like we've gotten so far away from those people. You know, that's and a good I, point. I, who was who was know? the last military guy? I guess Bush. I yeah. think I always think of Eisenhower, and then mm-hmm. you know, then you had uh, George Bush Senior. But nobody since then, huh? Mm, no. I mean, unless you count George W's Texas National Guard service, but <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, yeah, but uh, yeah, HW was the last one. He actually got shot down in the Pacific or something during World War II. Wow. But uh, yeah, lead by example, right? Be a leader, yes. which, um, you know, you, you look across Congress in the House, I mean, there's, there's, there's not very many people. There's a few that I like. 
you know, Dan Crenshaw, Navy SEAL, got got blown up by an IED. Is, is that why he has an eye patch? Yeah. Okay. Wow, I didn't know yeah. that. All right. Wow. So, yeah, his, his, his book, and I think he's been on a few podcasts with Rogan, but he's really interesting dude, and he pisses off both sides, which is kind of the why, you know, the reason yeah. I like him, but... I didn't realize uh, I was just watching that Tiger Woods documentary. It's mm-hmm. fucking crazy. He he would train with Navy SEALs. Um, when oh, he was, I heard about that. Uh, yeah, playing golf. He would just go and train with Navy SEALs. Like what? And that was like what he did. Isn't yeah. that crazy? Yeah, it's a really interesting documentary about his life. You know about you know his secret life that he had with all his mistresses and stuff. But I thought that was the most shocking part is how um, he would do that. You know and he would get beaten down and he would, that's how he was able to play that one match when he had like a broken knee or something like that. It, one of his matches, I'm not even a golf guy. I just, just recently watched it. So it's fresh on my mind, but yeah, just, that'd be crazy to go and train with some Navy SEALs like that. He was just in a car accident yesterday. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy yeah, how yeah. much I've heard Tiger Woods today. Yeah. He got uh, really bad. Really? Mm-hmm. He rolled 700 feet in his wow. car. Rolled. It's crazy. Yeah. Went into surgery. Uh, I think he messed up his right leg, so it's, he's going to be out for a while. Wow. I mean, that yeah. dude's got to be what? Well, I mean, is he 50 yet, or is he young, younger than that still? No, he's younger. He's he's probably, uh, I don't early even four, think he's 40. Mi- he may be 40. Wow, maybe you're right, because I guess he started. He started playing in major PGA tours when he was, I guess, a teen even, huh? Or or early. I don't know how if there's an age limit on that. Yeah, he's 45 now. 45 okay yeah 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 um and he's he used to like yeah he was like deep into pills and stuff like that you know like basically doing heroin basically you know but in a pill form you know oxycontin and stuff Rush so it kind of makes you, everybody's yeah so everybody's kind of like i think wondering what this wreck like hey did mm. he relapse or you know what i mean like what caused this i hope not you know man but, that um, shit's brutal and um I was, it's so funny because just since i same thing i'm a with you and Tiger Woods, I was listening to a Rogan thing today, so it's fresh in my brain. And that was in the news, I guess, very front headlines. Whenever they started their podcast, they were talking a bunch about him and all the the mistresses and fucking around. Did he ever get divorced, or what? What had that shit mm-hmm. go down? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, but yeah, I mean, definitely a, a resilient dude and a champion. But uh, um. I, that he always bothered me, and I I realized that it makes my like makes my grandma seem racist because you know she was like from an older generation that literally like where she grew up in Arkansas like they would just she was like you know we didn't they like use the n word but it wasn't derogatory because that's just the the lingo that they use and they were like oh we're gonna go play with the next door blah boy you know what I mean but not even that yeah. way mm-hmm. but she never she did not like Tiger Woods but it wasn't because he was black it's just because like. Once Tiger Woods started, and she loved golf and she loved like a lot of sports, but once Tiger Woods started playing, like that's all they talked about all the time was Tiger Woods. And I think it drove her nuts. And the thing I didn't like about him is he always looked like he was about to cry. And that just bothered me. I don't know why. Does, <laughs> doesn't he always look like he's about to cry? <laughs> uh, I think because his mother's Asian. <laughs> and so he's no, just it's got not an Asian eyes. thing. I'm not trying to be double racist sounding i just think <laughs> he looked like he was about to cry i don't know why it's just to look to, i don't know yeah. why some people just their face just annoys you and so <laughs> oh no, i know those i know those faces yeah, yeah. i'm sure that's he my did. face to some somebody out there they <laughs> yeah, see me and it ruins their day and they just want to punch this fucking dumb hat off my head <laughs> fucking skunk jeez bastard <laughs> talking shit about tiger woods <laughs> favorite golfer he is, ever he's the goat though yeah he considered oh he's the goat yeah yeah he There's called no himself question. coblin asian coblin asian caucasian black indian asian oh wow that's how, that's how he would consider himself so he would get mad when people would call him african-american or white or remember the Chappelle yeah. show when they had a they had a draft like a race a race a draft race draft yeah and everyone was trying to get tiger woods because yeah. they were like, he was all a little bit of everybody, and everyone's like trying to get Tiger Woods. Oh man, old Tiger. Jeez, yeah. I think but, there's an old there was an old interview when his dad was still alive, and they were on Oprah, and Oprah was just you know asking him like, well, which which race do you you know are more 
align with, you know, is it the black community? Is it the Asian community? And then she turned to his dad and she goes, what, you know, how did you raise your son? And, and he goes, <laughs> what, he goes, uh, what race did you, you know, basically asking his dad, which race did you, you know, basically raise your son in favor. Goes, yeah. Yeah. Favor. Uh, right. And he, he looks at her and he goes, the human race. <laughs> that's awesome. That's a great <laughs> yeah. response. Yeah. Oh, is it fantastic. You just check. I her, hate man. that kind of shit, man. Like, oh. and here's the thing. It's like, I, I think it's great to have cultural pride and, and celebrate where you came from, whether, you know, whether it's African ancestry or Irish or whatever the case may be, but within reason, right. You don't want to go like have that be to where you're somehow, you know, only aligned with that one thing or where you like, that's, that's kind of a, it is kind of a dumb loaded question. Cause then it's like yeah. what I'm supposed, I'm supposed to say that like I celebrate being one part of me more than another part. Like that's silly. Right. Yeah, totally. What are you uh jelly African-American? <laughs> In my, I, I hope my soul is man to bring out the soul of my guitar. You gotta be, you gotta have oh, some yeah. of that shit to be yeah, a blues man. guitar player, dude. Like, Oh, I, 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 yeah. I got lucky, man. I feel like I got some in my blood, man. Cause I mean, I at least got a little bit of groove to me, you know? Heck yeah, man. Yeah, dude. That's where the groove comes from, dude. So I didn't get the dick size, but oh, well, I mean, can't have it all <laughs> like, fuck it. You know what? <laughs> what? So what, what is your, what? <laughs> That's what that's what Vic got. Vic got the big dick. Like he's that's why he has that cool <laughs> podcast for hello Vic Ramos here. It just sounds all badass. Uh, I'm like, hi everybody, I'm from Ireland. <laughs> Shoot. Man. Certain races must be so pissed off. Another Joe Rogan thing. They were talking about some statistic of, of India and like how a regular condom didn't fit like a certain percentage of the pop, like three percent or, or or a third of the population, like a condom would fall off their dick. And I'm like, man, dude, that is fucking awful. And then like you get people like with stereotypes, like Asians or, or I don't know who Irish or Jews. I don't know who has the stereotypes, but but I mean, we could universally say like most of the time, like the joke about black guys is they have big dicks. That's a great stereotype, right? Like. So uh, I can't say. I anything. just came, dude. I'm sorry. I listened to that Joe Rogan stuff today, and I just came in here loaded, just ready to throw, to be inappropriate, like uh, ready, ready to talk about dicks. I just want like uh, Jelly thought we were going to talk about his his guitar influences. I'm like, how big's your dick, man? But uh, <laughs> yeah. didn't they do? Uh, they Jimi Hendrix got his like plastered, right? Or that one artist, you know, she like plastered everybody's dicks, like Jim Morrison's. Oh, oh really? I remember uh, that? Yeah, Jimi Hendrix. Like, uh, yeah, they like. Jim Morrison. Yep. Yeah. I, yeah, I know. I don't remember that artist. It's a, it's a chick, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Up in New York or something. I think. That's a pretty yeah. clever way to fuck rock stars, right? That's pretty. That she was. Yeah. She was pretty brilliant. I gotta say. Oh, I'm gonna. I'm yeah. gonna mold. I'm gonna mold your dick. Oh, whoa! Look at things are getting heated up. Wow. What do you know? Here, let me just. Yeah. Let me. Let me just. Uh, yeah. Prepare you for your. I love that scene in the doors. I love that movie. Uh, you know, the, with Val Kilmer and everything. There's a scene mm-hmm. in the doors where they're on a plane, and Michael Madsen, I think, is his name, plays a, some character that's like a buddy of his, and he's like a porn star of the day. And there's this, or, or something, and, and there's this part where he meets. I get no, or maybe he meets Jim Morrison, and Jim Morrison's just like, "Oh yeah, nice to meet you. You got a great cock." And I love the way it's just like so, like nonchalant, like, "Ah, oh, cool, <laughs> nice cock, dude." <laughs> yeah. Oh man! Speaking of speaking of further speaking of Cox, you know one of my favorite movies is Boogie Nights. Do you guys know that movie? Yeah, dude. My uh, oh, movie's Mark. awesome. So good. My lady showed me that one the other night. She's like, "You haven't seen Boogie Nights?" I was like, "No," nah. and it was all I expected it to be and it's more. So good. <laughs> I remember like the younger insecure me was like when I watched the movie, I was like, "Oh, I watch a movie about some dude's dick." Yeah. You know what I mean? And like. <laughs> Now I'm just like, whatever, dude, like, don't act like you're worried about seeing a dick when you've like, you know, you've watched so much porn, like you've seen so many dicks <laughs> acting like you don't want to see a dick. That's ridiculous. Like, oh but I was like, oh. dude, that movie is so brilliant. It's just, first of all, the soundtrack's amazing. The, the cast, the acting, I think everything about that movie is just like, and I'm kind of like, I don't want to say I'm a movie snob, but I'm kind of critical. Like, I love a good storyline, good at when all the components come together, right? Like a big Lebowski or something. And it's just like a brilliant piece of timeless mm-hmm. art, you know, like kind of like with music, you know, and some albums are just yep. perfect and flawless. 
And so like that kind of movie, and I feel like Boogie Nights is one of those movies where everything, everything is just right. The cast, the, the, the script and, but the comedy in that movie is just so brilliant. Like when they go form that rock band, that's some of the funniest damn shit, man. <laughs> They're just like, so this this art, this heart yeah, and soul yeah. on those and, and fucking John C. Riley, dude. John C. Riley is one of those guys. Like he's kind of like a a Christopher Walken type guy. Just anything he's in, it's better just because he's in it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. People tell me I look like Han Solo. <laughs> that movie's awesome, dude. You should watch it again so you can. Oh. You got to learn to yeah be able to quote. It's the worst when like you're with someone or you start dating someone and you're just like oh. You want to start dropping like Big Lebowski or Anchorman references and they haven't seen it. You're like, oh, we got to change that shit because uh-huh. you're not even going to get half my fucking job. That's got to be more, that's probably more of a guy thing, right? I don't know if girls as a general rule quote movies like guys because guys will sit through a movie and talk through the whole fucking movie, like quoting the whole movie, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, and yeah. a girl will talk through the same movie and tell you about boring shit you don't care about while you're trying to <laughs> quote the movie. Yep. Yes. Yeah. One thousand percent true. Absolutely. How long have you been married, man? Oh, dude, five years. Hang on, congrats. Yeah, thanks, man. And obviously, yeah, your yeah. wife has good taste. She introduced you to to Dirk Dirk's Diggler. Exactly. Yeah, she Roller girl. Me out yeah. And she's like, you need to watch oh, this today. Graham. Yeah. But um, now I gotta sit her down. We gotta watch Glory now. Dude, I'm telling oh. you, man. That and that's. And that's this is coming from me, and that is a movie. There's it's nothing, no slapstick, no cock jokes, just one hell of a good, a fine, oh, fine yeah. film, brilliant movie. I think one of the most best his, historical films ever made, honestly. Really? Wow. Yeah. yeah. Damn. Fantastic movie. Y'all look serious about it right now, just seeing y'all's faces. So I, it, I that's how good it is, dude. It's like one of those movies where you're just like you're getting for real about it. Yeah. No. Yeah. Seriously. <laughs> like if we were dr- if we were drunk at a bar if we were drunk at a bar like I I'm the I would come up to you like every three seconds and toast your beer like glory bro yeah <laughs> glory bro oh I love it I love it shoot well that is definitely on the the next to watch because now I now that I'm done with the Texas Riff Challenge I recorded my riff today okay um yeah i saw you and i both got tagged by mark sean from blackheart saying yeah dude um, yours, yours was badass by the way thanks man uh yeah sure. and i i you know i i had i it's funny because i actually i it's awful to say this and like because i i still i love music and i can still get really inspired but i i need like jolts and things because i'll i'll spend a lot of time like doing the have to's of like oh, i need to finish uh-huh. this i need to do that i need to comp this i gotta edit that i gotta do the blah blah and then like um but a lot of times now, if I get done with a, a lesson or something like that, I get inspired. And I've been doing lessons. You know, Ulrich Ellison, I'm, I'm assuming. Oh, yeah, right? man. He's the man. Yeah. yeah Ulrich's amazing, man. I, I met him on a whim oh, 12 something years ago, walking down 6th Street and heard him pl- and heard someone playing in a bar. And I was like, man, that's a great tone. That's some great licks. And I just nice. walked in and watched the band and ended up meeting him and talking with him. And um, we had him on the podcast a while back, but he has started, he's over, I think, in Turkey now. But he has started a, a a whole guitar course, and it all started with him. I don't know if you see his post or you've kept up with anything, but he basically started with this, like a Hendrix master class, and it grew into this whole big thing where he's created this whole master class. And so it is kind of, I'm kind of in the test trial of of, uh, oh. of students, right? And like, you know, I was like, yeah, dude, I'd love to, you know, to, to check this out. And and so I've made it to, to most of the sessions or whatever. And then he's now he's doing like, I just saw you had a post today that he's releasing a, a Hendrix cover album and shit, man. So he's really gone down and studied yeah. Hendrix and it's led to this whole big thing. Anyway, so a couple of times just meeting and doing that, I've gotten inspired from that. So got done with uh, that Tuesday. Uh, yeah, it was Tuesday. And I think I had just seen that post from Mark. And I started, yeah, messing around, I started messing around with a riff and man, and then the funny thing was, is I had this, I had this riff and I kind of put it all together and then I, and then I just started playing that thing that I ended up using. I was like, Oh wait, this is way cooler than this shit I just made up. <laughs> so yeah. I like posted that, but, um, dude, yeah, that's awesome. I'm glad you did it. I got to go check it out, man. Did you have yeah. any particular genre or inspiration that, that hit you for that or. Dude, it was weird. Uh, I didn't want to really like, um, give away anything that I've like working on for like recording sure. wise you know sure just sure i just kind of i like to play for fun because it just feels good to play you know there's this riff that just kind of feel good to play that you just yeah. kind of doodle around on you know um so it's like one of those kind of things dude you know just i pulled out the uh 
the hundred watt Marshall up here, and um, it just felt good to just kind of rock out of an amp for a little bit. And yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah nice. so, um, but yeah, dude, yours was freaking heavy as shit, man. It was awesome. Yeah, thanks. I it was actually too heavy. I what I it was funny because I and when I mean I mean that literally. I uh, I record. I have this little Black Star combo, right? And it's, it's oh yeah, um, cool. It's just, a, it's just a digital thing, but I use it for a lot of stuff. It's pretty cool. And uh, and I was just like distortion, you know. And then like when I like and then I just did the video on QuickTime, and then it was like just like low end. So I was like, oh god. So I actually put it in Premiere and like okay. like put a fucking shelf on it. <laughs> But uh, I was nice. like, I'm spending way too much time on this fucking riff video. But it was fun, man. It's, but like shit like that, it's cool because now I'm like, wow, cool. Now I got this fucking riff that I can use. I would have never made up that riff. But it was just like, you know, in that moment, I was like, oh, I need to, I need to, I want to do this. You know, it's like, you don't have yeah. to do it, but it's like, and so it's got a cool tag on the people. I know there's been other challenges of, there was like a little wing challenge that someone did. And I'm, really? I'm ashamed, I'm ashamed to say, I would assume that you're the kind of guy that has learned I would think maybe obviously Zeppelin we've talked about that and you play a tribute band but like I would think you've probably done the Hendrix study right and you probably know Definitely. Little Wing and learned all those right of path. I, I'm kind of like that a guitar player and like looking down at my feet in the corner that never did those certain like rite of passage things that you should do I mean I learned all the Metallica riffs and you know I did certain yeah. things but like but I never like note for note learned the Little Wing intro. And so this challenge was like a Little Wing challenge, but do your own thing with it. And I was like, oh, cool. I can do that. <laughs> yeah. And so I kind of like yeah. bullshit through some of Hendrix stuff and, <laughs> and then um, and did that. But that was a lot of fun. And it was just kind of fun to to take some stuff and be creative. I don't feel like I feel like I need that. And it's actually really good to get community inspiration from that. I'm in a uh, songwriting group called 1159 with, uh, you know, Dave Madden. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Dude you know, musician all around. I've known him for, for years. And so he started this group and, uh, yeah, man. Um, very cool. It's Is cool that- to just be like, okay, I got to fucking write something, you know, and it just forces mm-hmm. you to, to not masturbate and to do something in, in productive. <laughs> that's, that's the same songwriting group with Ray Prim, right? Yeah. That's how I met okay. Ray Prim. You know, yeah. Ray Prim, that dude's a beast. Ray Prim, baby. Jesus yeah, Christ, that motherfucker! What Ray Prim came on the podcast and it blew me away because he 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 wanted to be a rapper. He was talking about all he wanted to be was a rapper, huh. but I guess he just didn't feel like he had the skills. And then when he came down to Austin, he he told the story in the podcast it was hilarious about how he came to Austin because he thought it was an easy place to hook up with chicks because he <laughs> saw this hot he saw this hot girl. He came down here for something. I don't know if he was on a tour or what it was, but I, I he, think it was for football or something. No, right? it was you're right. Because it was before yeah. he was a musician. And so yeah, he was an athlete. Yeah. Yeah. He was an athlete. And so he was in Austin for something. And he said he, he was, he saw this really gorgeous girl and, um, and then and he like s- set on some swing and fell and looked like an asshole in front of her, but still managed to talk to her. And he's like, man, if I can fucking fall off my seat and all this and still hook up with a chick, then Austin's the place I got to go and like <laughs> fucking move to Austin and then said he just used to jump on stage and just start singing with all these different people and doing, you know, just had a knack, a natural knack as a singer, obviously. But yeah, that guy writes great, great songs, man. He's amazing. Yeah, dude. I've caught a couple of his Saxon shows. I love the uh, harmonies that uh, his friend does too. I forgot his name. It slips my mind right now. But Oh, so is in- it uh, Mexican Chocolate? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, those harmonies are killer that they have, so. Yeah, dude. But, uh, yeah, so I met I met some really cool people through that group. I mean, that comes back to what we first started talking about. It's just like the insane amount of talent, and and just like with that group, it's a it's like a, it's an investment in time. But I try to like make myself, and I've been doing that more. I think this year, in the last few months, since starting the podcast and being in that songwriting group, even though I've been in it in prior years, but I've really been trying to go like I really want to, and I, I feel like this, you know. I love all the bands that I love and there's a zillion of them and you're going to, there's going to be a new amazing pop band or whatever every day that you can hear. And you got, you know, that's great, but Mm -hmm. it's like, there's so much in your own backyard that you're not even listening to. And so I've really been trying to make that effort to like go listen to these artists, you know, and everyone that's come on and just from that group and people that have been on podcasts, it's like 50 plus new things that I've listened to. You know what I mean? And And every time I'm just like, fucking hell, this is amazing. You know? Yeah, dude. We're so spoiled, dude. So spoiled. I have a six CD changer in my car. Yeah. Um, just super high tech. And uh, I just 
But I just always have my friends' bands on, you know? I just have them just in constant rotation. That just is enough for me, and it's that's what's up. So yeah. speaking about influences, I feel like this is something I want to do more is like really showcase things on a local level. Well, it doesn't even have to be local, but just, the, you know, not, not why. I, I mean, I can go put a Metallica song on my Spotify playlist, but everybody knows Metallica. I'd rather be like, here's something you may not have heard. That's totally fucking awesome. Check it out. Right. What are some yeah. of your um, when you say your friends bands, like what are some some things oh, like, that's in your CD deck or some of your favorites to listen to locally other than Skunk Manhattan, of course? Yes, dude. Hell yeah. Um, I mean, shoot, I mean, it's just, it's, it's friends from like, uh, my friends in Brooklyn, this band, they have a reggae band called Sundub. And I have a friend named Jossie uh, in Nashville. He has a cool glam rock group that just has killer songs, man. Like, they should all be like hits to me. You know what I mean? Yeah. It just, if it just needs the right money put behind it, the right marketing, you know, kind of thing, you know? Um, but, uh, you know, here, I mean, here in Austin, I mean, I love, I've, I've been working with Sam Houston. He's a, he's has his own group, Sam Houston, Black Odyssey. And um, we've been working on writing some songs together. We've been really meshing and, and doing that over at 512 Studios, where I just got done mm-hmm. recording an uh, album over there with uh, Omar Vallejo. Um, but yeah, man, I mean, Zach Purse, I'm a big fan of. He's a great uh, guitar player here in town. He was at the Christmas Jam and, um, Sir Woman was another really great group and uh, Trino Black. They're one of my favorite rock bands. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's it's like just you know, like right there. You're you're naming people I should know. And like I'm going like I've heard that name, but I don't know. Like I'm like I, I, I got like forced myself to be like, go listen to this stuff. Like, of course, it's yeah. going to be bad. And that's like it's almost like a dime a dozen. Right. There's just like hundreds of like ridiculously good artists here. And it's just a matter of like yeah. who have you, you know, What's the small percentage that you've actually heard, right? Because there's so mm-hmm. many. Yeah, dude. So that's that feeds my soul enough, dude. I mean, I'm in, on the on the bigger stream, on the more mainstream level, you know, I'm a big fan of Rival Sons. Um, oh, yeah. I don't know if you've listened to them. I'm a huge fan of them. You know, I love their um, the riffs, love the vocals. You know, all that. It's just they're kind of the whole. They just bring out bring it all home for me. You know? So yeah. Um. What was I going to say? Shit. Yeah, what you've been listening to lately. Mm, I had a question that I forgot. Yeah, I don't know. I'm kind of <laughs> weird, man. I, I kind of jump ball. I'm I'm just really sporadic. I mean, there's there's certain bands. Like Texas are, Weather? Yeah, like Texas Weather. Like, <laughs> no, it, it fits my... Yeah, yeah. No, that's a good there analogy, go. actually. That's that's a great kind of quote. Like, my my artistic or, 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 you know, musical tastes are like Texas weather, you know? Yeah. Cause it's literally yep. winter one sec, you know, one hour in summer, the next, I mean, I listen, <laughs> it, it, I get really, I'll go through phases where I'll like want to play piano and like, like do the more like re- classical reading stuff. So I've always like really loved like a lot of, uh, classical piano music, Beethoven, Chopin's. I mean, I, I love a lot of that stuff. Ja- I've gotten more and more into jazz in recent years. I love, and a lot of it's very piano based cause I, I, um, I just gravitate toward that. Um, mm-hmm. but I mean, a lot of jazz oh, yeah. stuff I'd never used to listen to cause it's, it's a, kind of an acquired taste. I think, uh, like, you know, bebop and stuff, but a lot more slow jazz. I love that stuff too, though. Coltrane, Miles Davis, whatever. But I mean, I, you know, I have my same old rock bands, all the classics that we've talked about, you know, the door Zeppelin. I, I love, I mean, yeah, we've said this before. Like if you don't, how do you not like the Beatles? It doesn't even make sense. You're not even a human being. You know what I mean? Like it's, <laughs> uh, Pink Floyd, all that stones, all that shit. I'm a huge faith. No more in Mike Patton pan. I know that's a little more under the radar, but I listened to a lot of cool. those projects. Um, a lot of the, a lot of the metal stuff from the, you know, the eighties and all that early nineties shit, man, you know, the, the Seattle grunge yeah. scene. I mean, that shit was huge for me, like as an influence. Um, so, I mean, I, more or less, I'd say I'm I'm kind of a, a rock guy. But then I went back, and of course, I listen to all the old blues shit. You know, I like um, old country stuff. I like pretty nice. much any kind of music that I feel like is authentic. You know, if it's coming from the right place and written with the right intentions, and it's about the art and the song, and and there's a point to it beyond like following a formula to make this much money, or you know, because uh-huh. this is what the latest hot shit producer in nashville said that i had to do you know i have to have a yeah. i have to have a fucking rapper you know it you <laughs> know country, at, the, at the two minute two minute mark yeah bro country is is i don't listen to bro country i, I can tell you that much 
Uh, um, I played with a bro. I played with a bro country artist um, for a little while in Nash out in Nashville. So yeah, Nashville, where I'm from, is five hours away from Nashville. Right, um, right, yeah. Tennessee, and people kind of get it confused, but yeah, it was this guy named Just Justin Adams, and um, I was in fear for my life when I would be in the van with him because after the shows, he would drive the van. Well, you know, we drive to Michigan overnight from Nashville, you know, to go and play at some place at the University of Michigan or something. And uh, he would just be, it would, he would, I'd be in fear of my life because he would get new likes on Instagram or something. And he would be driving like this and then oh, his no. phone would be right here. And he would be like stalking all the hot chicks that were, you know, <laughs> liking his post. And like he the literally, I'll be like, country. hey, yeah. put your fucking phone down, dude. Jesus. Like, this is my life. I'm not going to fucking die being your side man of your shitty ass group. Like, so then I was it, just done and I was done with it. But, well, yeah, that's the best thing that like, could have happened to you, man. Show you, man. Like, God. <laughs> I mean, we've had, we've talked to some people and I have friends, I mean, dude, especially in Texas. I mean, I, I know people in Nashville and of course, several from here, and I'm always happy to see their success. I've known so many guys or know so many guys, as I'm sure you do, that have toured with all these big, you know, Texas country acts and big country acts. And I, Hey man, it's a great paycheck. You get a fucking tour bus. You get all this great shit. I'm sure that's hard yeah. to say no to. And, and to be honest, like you gotta be a good player, not only as a player, but you gotta have the gear, the stage presence, the look, there's a whole thing that goes with it. And yeah. so I don't even, I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I could even do that job if I wanted to, you know, because there's a lot of things that you kind of have to have. I don't think it was ever something that was in my cards that was meant for me. So I'm, I'm okay with not having done that, but, but it's cool to see people that got to go do that, you know? And I think, yeah, Probably made a living doing it, but was that was that a decent paycheck that gig? Yeah, it was. I mean, it it definitely it, it paid the bills. You know, yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong, but um, you kind of play the role of an employee, mm -hmm. you know, and he's the employer. You know, sure. that that's really the way it's treated. You know, um, you know, from uh, after the show, you go and sell the merch, you know, or something, you know, and he's signing autographs, you know. These guys I play with, I play with this one Texas country artist named John Wolf, and he, well, he stole my identity like later on with taxes, which is all all kinds of screwed up. What the fuck? But um, wow. yeah, he's just just a. I feel you like know, I know very that. terrible person. I feel like I know that um, name. But yeah, he uh he would bring in ten to fifteen grand a night just selling merch. You know, Jesus fucking. I mean, I I wouldn't sell his merch or anything like that. You know, it's hard I, not to hate these guys. Anything like that, but. <laughs> Oh yeah, I mean, there's things I I couldn't even say certain things that we, that he would say, you know, and um, it was just disgusting. But um, you learn a lot. What I learned a lot about playing with these country artists was, uh, you know, how not to treat your band. Mm. You know, and I learned all those things, you know, and I really took value to them. And I've had a really uh, just my band has always been very loyal to me, you know, because I've known exactly how not to treat them because mm -hmm. I had to go through it on the on the other side, you know, so. Yeah. I, I actually, I'm really appreciative that I, I experienced that, you know, so comes back to that. We're talking about leadership, man. I, I really think that, you know, a good leader is you're a, t you're a team member, you know, I mean, you're, you're a team and you want everyone to succeed equally. You don't look down on other people yeah. like I'm the boss and you're just some hired piece of shit that works for me. Say what I do, boy. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like. That's no mm -hmm. way to treat anybody in any walk of life or anything. I was fortunate enough. The one guy that I did some, uh, there was this dude named Jeremiah Houston. That I did some shows with 10 years ago or whatever, and just all the Texas stuff. And, uh, and that was, yeah. you know, Texas country, but he was super cool, man. And they were pretty decent paying yeah. gigs. And the first time I ever played with him, I think we went and played Midland. And I mean, he wasn't like a high level name, but he had some stuff on the radio and whatever. And we went and played some dance hall. And I mean, he, people were just fucking buying the shit out of merch. Nobody even necessarily knew who he was or we were. I mean, and mm -hmm. it was, but man, it's, it's just a built in market. It's a very different mentality. Mm -hmm. And people go to dance, they have a good time. Then they just go and buy your, the merch, whether they know you or not. And then we had fucking yeah. hotels and, you know, stand. And I was like, God damn dude. And this, you know, and then the upper level guys, yeah, they're on the tour buses and all the stuff. So, I mean, shit, I've always been just like blue collar rock dudes. So even if we yeah. have like a, a trailer to sit in, I'm like, well, this is cool. This is high. I love yeah. it. We like played the rot rally and, and had like a, uh, with this dude, bull, bull, he loved all those buffaloes last year. And there was like a, a back, you know, a trailer back behind the stage with like, uh, or, or like an RV or whatever with like the Winnebago thing. Uh, 
yeah, yeah. Snacks in a bathroom and like, oh, and have a shower and there's water and I'm like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, that's when you gotta be like, yeah. Well, that's when you gotta walk in and be like, uh, is the water filtered? Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Get, slam the fridge door and be like, this isn't that. I can't even make a joke about it because I don't even know what the different water brands are, like Aquafina <laughs> or whatever the fuck. Like, yeah, where's my Topo Chico? There it is, Topo Chico. Uh. By the way. <laughs> I had a Topo Chico the other night that had been sitting, that my fiance left in the fridge and was sitting there forever. And I just didn't even notice it, like blended in with the condiments. And we were talking, she's like, did I leave it? Because this was like when we had no water. And I was like, man, this fucking sucks. And I'm kind of blown through everything I, I had. And and and, uh, and I was like, oh my God, there is a Topo Chico. It was like the most delicious, oh. amazing <laughs> drink I had ever had in my life at that moment, man. Was I it love the it, wine? Man. Was it the lime flavored one? Oh, so oh, good. Dude. I love that one. The green one. I feel like yeah. Oh, yeah. when I go to the oh, store yeah. next, I'm going to buy a bunch of water that I'm just going to keep on hand. I'm going to buy some Topo Chico's now just because like, it was just that I was, good. Yeah. I was on the lime craze for a while, Vic. I did that for like two summers. Just was Topo Chico with lime. That was it. Oh, yeah. Well, when that I stopped it. drinking, that's what I did. That's what you do at bars, you know? Yeah. That's one nice thing about those two is I would just have Topo Chico at the bar. Um, mm-hmm. I love doing that with lemon though. Just straight up lemon water is good, man. Yeah. I, mean, I think lemons are supposed to be pretty good for you, right? Vic, I mean, yeah. you're the nutrition dude, like, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. It helps. Uh, basically, it helps. Um, I think it's like a toxin flush or something, or cleans your liver or something like that. Yeah. Oh, man. I need to get me some more yeah, lemon. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's like first thing in the morning. I think you're supposed to drink like room temperature water with some lemon juice in there, and then that'll get, that'll set really? you for the rest of the day. Yeah. Oh. Huh. That's like the healthy way to clean yourself. Like coffee is like the, uh, although now it, uh, as a coffee drinker, it doesn't affect me anymore. But I remember when I used to get like Starbucks, uh, mo- I'm a mocha guy. Oh yeah. I, dude, look I at me. I, I got to have my mocha. If I don't have my mocha mix, I'm all mad. <laughs> I got to put fucking sugar in my coffee. This is bullshit. And like, uh, but uh. yeah, dude, like that shit will fucking blow through you, man. You'll be like, <laughs> one one minute everything's cool like 10 seconds later you are running to the fucking toilet like like it's a mcdonald's and you're in england that's a that's a <laughs> joke for vic like it just had some uh austin unfiltered water uh seriously dude every now and then on the podcast and i do this with guy guys i i know so that's why i haven't been like tell us your best shit story but maybe you got a good one <laughs> like oh, uh, dude. But, dude we have had one. three of the all-time greatest shit stories ever on this podcast two of them i'd heard before it doesn't matter every time i hear them i'm crying laughing and another one was great too and and those honestly i think i need to put together i was thinking about this vic we need to put together a little collage of like just quick little clips to advertise the podcast something that someone might actually click on because it's only a minute but i think that's what we should use like the shit stories because that if I, that's <laughs> what i would tune in for that shit's funny as hell man yeah. dude I got, all right i'm just gonna do it dude I yes got yes fuck <laughs> okay so i'm at this cafeteria i was about uh 15 years old and um it was called the piccadilly cafeteria i was there with my grandfather my grandpa and um just something didn't hit me right maybe the roast beef you know just didn't hit me right and uh this bathroom it was in the mall you know we would go to the cafeteria in the mall and uh this guy just he's plopped in there you know like there's one stall you know and he's just plopped <laughs> Like, you know, like he's not gonna move. You know, it's like uh, the construction on I-35. It's just <laughs> not, not, and not, it's gonna, not gonna move. He's got a newspaper out. Um, you know, I'm like knocking on the door like, hey, sir, I need to, you know, I need to go to the bathroom. So, you know, lo and behold, um, you know, there was a urinal next next to him. <laughs> and so, like, I just, just, you know, not a normal sh- kind of shit but just spewing shit into the <laughs> urinal next to him. As he's sitting there, he doesn't say anything. Okay. Wow. So luckily no one walks in, you know, no one walks to the bathroom while this terrible event's going on. <laughs> and um, so finally I'm done, you know, and I'm trying to clean up somehow, you know, and I'm sitting there at the very end of cleaning up. And, and this whole, the guy the whole time is just in the stall. You don't even hear him. And I'm washing my hands and I'm just starting to wash my hands. And this guy walks in and he's like, what the hell happened in there? And I'm like, man, I don't know who did that. 
Oh, I just walk right out. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah like, you, dude, if you don't get caught in the act, you never confess to some shit like that, man. Oh no. <laughs> but there was a good like Damn. you know four to five minute window that it, you know I could have been caught, but I, I didn't. So, but geez, dude. And then I was luckily I was at a mall, so I could go and get some fresh linens, you know, for myself. <laughs> Just like, uh, yeah, hey, uh, I just decided on a whim, no, nothing related to the bathroom trip that I just had, that I, I really want to go buy some clothes right now. Just, uh, I, I just realized I need some new oh. boxer shorts. Nothing to do with the bathroom break I just took. Nothing, nothing at all. Oh, that's fucking yeah, dude. awesome, dude. God, dude, I feel like, and that's the thing though, right? Because like life is full of crazy shit like that. No normal. I mean, some people would just do that anyway because they're fucking batshit crazy. But, but I mean, a normal person wouldn't just go shit in a fucking urinal unless it was a dire emergency, right? Yeah. But when you're in it, and when you're in a situation like that, and the only option is shitting your fucking pants or blowing it all over the fucking wall, like what? Are, what are you gonna do? You know? Well, as adults, you know, we we have we have that mental. We, we can put that block in, you know, as adults, I feel like, you know, we're good at, you like, okay, this is going to wait. But as a kid, you know, you're still developing that, I feel like, you know. No, that's true. Yeah. Well, you know, I remember so. like uh, the weird shit, you know, you'd be in like middle school or something and walk in and there's <laughs> fucking turds sitting in the urinal. <laughs> <middle. laughs> and you're just like, what the fuck? Dude, I remember this one motherfucker, like, and this guy actually played guitar. And like, we, um, you know, we used to hang out and play guitars. It was like really not a whole lot of like, you know, good guitar players where, where I grew up, but like, uh, and where I started playing and everything. But like this dude, I remember in high school, I think, yeah. One time I just walked in the bathroom and he's standing, you know, guys will stand at the urinal and I still think it's kind of weird, but you're having a, t- you know, a conversation with your butt. That's fine. But don't start looking at your buddy. That's weird. Right? Like <laughs> just face fucking forward when you're having that conversation, your dicks are out, but way beyond that. Right. In a, any kind of subtle, inappropriate, you know, bathroom urinal behavior this dude would he had his pants at his ankles like peeing at the urinal i was like what in the fucking hell oh. <laughs> that's, just, that's weird that's so weird yeah people do that man it's so weird that's they just weird. let it all the way down they because some people can't pee unless the pants are all the way down <laughs> People told me it's like it's like, like some kind of, some kind of like yeah. interesting, like not stage fright, the opposite of stage fright. It's like you just real not not only do I yeah. want you to see my dick, I want you to see my butt cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> I can't I can't pee yeah. unless you see my butt cheeks. That's what the uh, true the true uh, Hollywood Jelly Ellington story is like. He, Jelly has to be <laughs> he's an exhibitionist. He has to shit in a urinal for all to see. Yeah, over there, over down there at the rainbow, man. God damn, Hotel dude. Cecil. Oh, yeah, <laughs> the Hotel deep. Cecil. Uh, that's the that's the least of that place's problems. But some weirdo would walk in that place and get aroused or, yeah, dude. Shit makes it's me want to murder. It's nasty though, because when you drop your pants all the way, you're getting all that nasty pee and stuff on the ground that you're pulling back up. It's like, oh, yeah. I, I don't I don't care how uh, good aim you have, dude. And I'll <laughs> say it here, and I'm not ashamed. I don't give a fuck. I will. I don't care. Like. I will sit at my own house. I will sit on the fucking toilet to pee. It doesn't make me less of a man. It just means I'm not going to pee all over my own shit. Like if I'm somewhere else, <laughs> yeah. I'm not a psycho. I'm going to stand up and pee in public. And I, if I pee on your toilet, sorry, whatever. I don't care. But it's impossible to not have sprinkles fly on your toilet, right? Yeah. Is it just it's I, impossible? So, yeah, dude, it's oh. weird, right? And like, you're right. And so if you pull your fucking pants down, you get pee all over yourself. Oh, everywhere. We we had a dude at yeah. work that would walk around the office barefoot. Like he'd come into work, wear shoes. He'd get to his desk, take his shoes off. You know, so he oh. was he was the uh, he was the office uh, IT guy fixing shit. But I mean, he would walk into the bathroom barefoot, go oh. take a leak. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's oh so man. nasty. Oh, not even flip flops. No, no, it's bare feet. <laughs> See back uh, back in the strum days, man. I uh, I used to. I remember Keenan used to do that. He started taking his shoes off. Hey, did you ever meet Keenan Levick? Do you know who that is? No, nah, dude. The guitar the guitar player. He used to play with. Uh, okay. And he was one of those guys that 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 did some touring with some pretty big name Texas country guys. I can't think of who it was offhand, but he he did, he did all that gig for a while and. Um, okay. But I've known him for 15 years or something now, and he, we used to teach at one of the same schools, and and he, it was super casual, right? And he would always walk around barefoot, and so I used to wear flip flops, and I ah, fucked it, and I just walk around barefoot too. But that's the thing; it's like that's fine, but not to the bathroom, dude. I'll put always put shoes on. I used to live in a house with my roommates in San Antonio, like um, like when I pretty much first got out of high school and stuff, and uh, 
it, there was one bat. It's just a bunch of young bachelors, just disgusting. And there was one the the like the community bathroom dude. I'd put my fucking shoes on every time I went to use the bathroom because yeah. it was so disgusting. Just yeah, dude. gross. Bathrooms get dirty quick, dude. Yeah, no. Get dirty quick. I'm spoiled at this point. Like I'm one of those. I, I don't you know I don't want to call like almost said like one of those weirdos, but I think it's the opposite. Like. If I, I don't like using a public restroom, it's uncomfortable because I know it's gross. Yeah. I mean, I'll sit there and use half a roll of toilet paper just trying to about to shit my pants just to try to clean the goddamn toilet off before I sit on it. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I, there's motherfuckers uh, like when we had Rudy, this other guy we had on the show named Rudy, a long time friend of mine, like he's a nasty motherfucker. And, uh, and he had a great shit story, which was of no surprise. But I remember hanging out the last time I think I had seen him a t- long time ago in Austin. We went to the Jackalope. That's a dirty ass place. I like the jackalope oh, okay. back oh. in the day. It's fun, but oh. filthy. He just went in there, plopped down on the fucking toilet, and just dropped, you know, did his business. Yeah. I'm like, you're fucking sick, dude. What's <laughs> wrong with you, man? I would rather, seriously, oh, a bar man. like that, I'd rather just fucking blow it on the wall and shit in the fucking urinal. Like, I'm not putting my ass on that fucking toilet. I was on a date one time and pretty much ruined my chances with a girl because I, ref- I, I was like, I have, we have to go home. <laughs> I'm not gonna, oh, sh- I'm not gonna shit in at this <laughs> restaurant or whatever. <laughs> yeah, dude. Oh, the Jackalope. I love going. In, I love going and drinking there. Jackalope's fun. Yeah, I used to get their burgers there, man. If memory serves, that's a pretty good burger. It's been a long, yeah. long time since I've been down there. I'll get their wings. Actually, they're, they had some killer wings. Oh yeah, you you know, sometimes that, you just need a dirty bar to have some good wings. You know what I mean? Did you ever go to that bar Bender? You know that place on? Uh, oh, dude, that's it's my spot. Bender's dude, that's bomb. We, we practice. Uh, we practice down at the Red Leafs. Uh, the Austin Music Room, oh, drop south first. Dude, I used to take vo- so I actually took a few vocal lessons there from this girl Emily Shirley, nice. who's, who's one of the people in the songwriting group. Another great songwriter, cool. but um, yeah, yeah, I know, we, we I know the guy her. that originally opened that school, and I think he sold it. But uh, I, oh yeah, that's right. There uh-huh. because there's that school, and then they've got the rehearsal rooms, right? Yeah, yeah man, that's right. Yeah, it's kind of freaky though. It's a, uh, it's, I feel like it was a. Uh, it's either an old children's insane asylum oh kind of place or it's a uh, and then it turned into like a rest home because every door has a light little thing above it you know so yeah. kind of makes you wonder what, what it was but it's a cool spot man it's a great place it's like a great aussie community place like we share a, like our next door neighbors eric testimony so we can always jam out all oh, right on yeah i always forget about that place um yeah but bender's just right up the street so we, we always just go to bender afterwards you know after practice and you know get the one dollar lone stars and their their wings are killer yeah yeah so, well that, when you said yeah. wings that's why i thought of bender because i don't know if yeah, it was tuesday or whatever i had this whole group of friends back to that uh, met around maybe 2009 or something and we always called it benders i don't know why and if you say bender yeah. you're like a weirdo like it benders <laughs> and like but dude i know man i got in a habit i would go there all the time and then there's there's like Bender, like any bar, I guess, but I just knew that one so well. Like there's the regulars there, but then at a certain point, like I'd go like all the time, and then I don't go for a long time, and I show up randomly one night, and there's that still that same person. You're like, damn, dude, like <laughs> yeah. this motherfucker lives here. <laughs> I know, man. Yeah, since I mean, obviously, since the pandemic has happened, I'm not at bars, but I kind of put that to bed a little few years prior, anyway. So, but man, okay. back in the day, like. I had a problem. I mean, not like an insane alcoholic, but I was definitely at the bars too much. And that was, I inhabited that place many a time for sure. Yeah. <laughs> but good, it's, it's, such a a good, game, it's a cool man. place, man. Good people. I heard yeah. that was a, like a little Woodrow's or something, or it even used to be a music venue at one point. Really? Yeah. I yeah. have a buddy too, that I knew way back from high school when I was in college station that, uh, DJs there sometimes. A lot of times when they had their anniversary parties and stuff, DJ. That's that dude that was supposed to be on the podcast, but then what fell off the face of the earth. Thing. His okay. name is Adam Adam Brown, A B. Yeah. So I don't know what happened to him, but cool, cool dude. Gotcha, man. Um, yeah. Um I'm always taking advantage of their specialty wings and you know, I'm a I'll take Bender over Pluckers any day, dude. Dude, I, I had a thing with Pluckers where I went there the first time I went there. Vic, you know all about this. And I think there was this waitress there that I liked or something, and that's maybe influenced me. But I was like, man, this place is rad. And I kind of liked it. And, and then I ended up doing this dumb thing like for two years in a row that I had like this annual Pluckers party. Remember that oh, shit, Oh, that's Vic? right. Yeah. 
Yeah, I do remember that. One of the first one was for that chick because I think she was. I think I could be wrong, but I think it had to do with her. And then there was another one. I would always dedicate it to somebody, right? Oh, I know what it was. It was. I think it was your brother that influenced. Because I, once I found out you could have the pluckers card. That's right. Such yeah. a genius thing that any business does. Because oh, then yeah. I was like, oh. And so then I was like, oh, dude, I'm just going to have a pluckers party. And I'll have like invite a bunch of people. And I'll get all this shit on my pluckers card. I don't know what my thought process was. Not like I was paying for everything. But anyway, like, so then we did one. And we did one of those. I think it was for PJ, I think. But I could be wrong. It was a long time ago. But uh, but then I remember going there one time, and it's like, okay, it's not that great. And I spent it was like nine dollars for like a twenty four ounce beer or sixteen. I was like, okay, fuck this. I'm done with fuckers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Dude, yeah, you're like one of my buddies. He won't go anywhere where Lone Star. If it's a Lone Star is over four dollars, he won't go. It's like, yeah, dude. I feel like certain beers, dude. You gotta keep that shit in check, man. It's a fucking. Lo- yeah. We all love it. I like Lone Star. Um, what do you call it? Paps? P- what else is called? P. Yeah. Oh, Paps, PBRs. Yeah. PBRs. Yeah. Yeah. Those are great. Yeah. You know, you're a dingy little bar. Those are great. But yeah, those are the beers that you're supposed to spend two bucks bucks on. You know, spend five. I'm gonna spend five dollars. Yeah. I'm gonna buy a real beer for Christ's sake. You know, an IPA. Uh, um. <laughs> man, Vic and I used to go to Hooters, man. Remember that? Yeah. And they used, do they even have a Hooters here now? I guess they have one north, huh? They're, um, north? I don't know. San Marcos, they do. San Marcos does, yeah. That's like a newer one. But I think yeah, all the Austin awesome ones are gone, right? Dude, yeah, the, Hooters, it wasn't even about the chicks for me, man. Lots of tots. I just had to go stuff my face tots? with that bullshit. Yeah. Nice. I had an experience at the last Hooters that was there right near downtown, you know? That was near. Yeah, the, Riverside uh, over there, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Last time I was there, there the waitress was like, "Hey, I'm quitting tonight, um, so you're just gonna get the service you're gonna get." And wow. that was it. Yeah. yeah, man. I mean, I thought you were gonna be know. like, "I'm quitting tonight," and I think you're cute. And then, like, you got put in this Tiger Woods situation. Like, oh fuck! <laughs> and then, and then you had to be like, "Which side of me do I go with?" Right? Do I? <laughs> Do I go with the big dick black guy side that's like I got to go rail this chick based on principle or the I'm an Asian and I have math homework? Man, look at me being a horrible, horrible racist. This podcast should be canceled. It's despicable. 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 I miss that word. Despicable. Despicable Despicable is a good word. That is a really good word. It is. Yes. Oh, man. I Man, dude. You know what I love about this and at your expense is like I have a guest like you like I don't really know this guy like I think like we're just going to like talk about music and then this just turns out to be an off the rails shit story podcast. <laughs> shit story man. Yeah I got Tiger Woods up on my uh, browser right now you know it's just things have gone crazy. Yeah me? like how how weird is so, that? I'm looking at Tiger Woods' smile even though he looks like he is crying. Exactly right he's weird. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, dude. He's got, he's got too much. Mi- too much. Head. He's got too much mix in him. He's just weird looking. <laughs> yeah, it's, I'm gonna go it's, Google it's his gonna... ass. I want. I want to just like hate on somebody. I'm gonna look. I just look. <laughs> look at Tiger. Look. I'm just looking. Look, look at this goofy <laughs> ass motherfucker. He has a nice smile, but yeah, it he looks, looks fake, sad. dude. That smile looks like. You know what? That smile. I'm assuming we're looking at the same picture. That smile looks, looks like he's like, I'm about to shit my pants. That's what that smile looks like to me. <laughs> all of his pictures. Oh my God. I, dude, I just had a revelation. Every single, all the all the images where he looks like he's crying, Tiger Woods all, eternally looks like he's about to shit his fucking pants or that he did just shit his pants. Every picture. Go look, Vic. Oh. Yeah, no, I'm looking right now. It's great. It's crazy. <laughs> Like he's holding he's it in, right? It's like he's either holding it in or it just, it just happened. And he's just it's, like, well... And then oh, he got that smile. Yeah, he's just like, well, I just got. I'm a little heavier, heavier set on the on the back nine, I guess. <laughs> uh, Jesus, geez. man. The documentary is good, though. You got to watch it. I, I didn't even know that was a thing. Is that a Netflix deal or? Um, it's HBO. Oh yeah, you know. I can't get. Or so, how does HBO work now? Like you have, it's a subscription service that you pay monthly for, or what? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, unless you have, because I don't have like the cable package or whatever. Yeah. You can get it separately. I think it's like, I don't know what, nine, 12, something a month. Yeah. Cause they do have some good exclusive shows. I kind of forget about. Yeah. If HBO. you have a, a Prime video, you can get HBO mm-hmm. through that. Yep. And they have like limited selection. Oh, Amazon Prime but, does? 
Yeah. Oh, but I'll cool. tell you what, man. All this, all this streaming stuff is starting to get confusing now. It's like there's HBO Max now, then there's Apple TV Plus, and then there's like you know Paramount TV Plus, ESPN Plus. I'm like, dude, <laughs> this, is, this is like confusing. Like, ESPN just the, the one Ocho. Thing. Yeah, dude. Yeah. It's I know, dude. Yeah. It's <clears throat> well, we we're talking to the guy yeah. the other day. He's like, <clears throat> I'll sit, and I'm like. I'm glad it's not just me. Like you'll sit there on Netflix and just go through shit and not even pick anything and like just spend 30 minutes yeah. looking for something to watch. Be like, I, it's just too much. It's like such an overload. And same I with know, music. Really sometimes is. I'm like, man, there's just yep. like, what do I even want to listen to? It's like you used to have like a physical thing and you got it and you, and you were like, I'm watching yeah. this DVD that I just rented from. I actually liked the old going and rent movies right it was kind of like and you rent that fucking movie and oh yeah dude and then forget to take Friday it back. Night Blockbuster, dude. yeah <laughs> yeah and uh and forget. now yeah it's it's i mean it's great it's convenient but it's it's like you really if you don't have for sure in your mind what you're or you know what the fucking thing about netflix is it never fails it's like whatever i want to watch netflix doesn't have it and then they'll have it yeah. like when i don't care about it like two months later when i'm like oh i don't really feel it. all of a sudden i'll see that it's there and then the day that I'm like, oh, they've got it. I remember. I want to watch it. Nope, not on Netflix anymore. You know? So annoying. <laughs> yeah. And then you got to buy it on some other thing. Uh, yeah. Have it be today. I did Jeez, do the man. Amazon Prime Probably thing. Faced. So I should look into yeah. that, I guess. I, I haven't really used it for anything other than, you know, next ordering. day shipping. <laughs> ordering plaster of Paris. Yeah, <laughs> yeah dude. Plaster. <laughs> ordering plaster. what? Ordering plaster of Paris. What's that? Heck yeah. So you can offer those uh, <clears throat> plastered cocks at the next show. Just you know, just put it up on the merch booth. Yeah, dude. Oh yeah, Skunk, skunk's yeah. plastered cock. <laughs> I've already got I condoms. <laughs> that's that. awesome. Y'all have condoms. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty. Yeah, that's awesome. It's same fitting for the brand. Although we really haven't sold. That's probably the least selling thing of all. Actually, is condoms. Funny enough. Oh man. <laughs> well, then my horrible. I showed it on another podcast. So we made this spoof hat that just says make Roger and good again, like the red hat. And, and actually nice. like the first round they sold pretty well and we sold out and then I already ordered. And then we all know, you know, what's happened in 2020. I'm like, well, I don't think I'm ever going to sell these. Although that was some, I'll just got to go where, where's a place where a bunch of crazy, rowdy, racist rednecks live. I'll just go there and sell all my hats. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. Uh, just sell masks, man. That's what we sell. Oh, mask. Yeah. Where did yeah. you get them from? Um, dude, there's this uh place called it's called Threadless, mm -hmm. um, and they and it's kind of nice. Like you can um, you put the designs together, and basically when someone orders it, they'll ship it to them. You know, so you don't even have to worry about shipping it to them. Nice. Oh, you know, okay. Um, yeah. Our lazy stone asses don't have to get up off you know <laughs> the couch and uh, get it with there with it because I've sometimes I'll have people like, hey man, I ordered a CD like. Two weeks ago, uh, I want my money back. I haven't gotten it yet. Oh, someone's actually. Dude, I don't have to worry about that at all. Seriously though, you, that's such a good idea because I I really am the worst because I. Yeah, well, no, first of all, when someone actually when someone actually buys something, I'm it, I'm always like pleasantly shocked and like wow, how cool you know someone bought something, and then yeah. then my lazy side kicks in and I'm like. I don't want to go to the post office. <laughs> <laughs> See, hey, that's why you yeah, company. Yeah. Um, it's nice. Yeah. They pay, they just, they charge a little fee, you know, but it's worth it to me. So they just ship it, you know, they ship it out. Um, totally. But if someone orders it, they handle it all. So yeah. Yeah. There's cool. a lot of those sites and I think that's a pretty good model, man. I'm going to, I'll, I'll yeah. Google over Tiger Woods here. Threadless. <laughs> yeah. Threadless. <laughs> shop do, they, do they ship plaster? <laughs> Do they ship plaster and, and Tiger Woods diapers? He should have a diaper line. <laughs> Dude, so my friend Dave, who we had on one of our very first podcasts, who I've known for, oh God, 20 something years. And we're just, I mean, if anyone, if our phones ever went missing and our text messages were read, we'd both be in jail. Like, it's just the most vile, horrible, the kind of stuff you talk about on tour, like what what's on tour stays, you know, the horrible, horrible things that people say in jokingly, but. Nonetheless, anyway, what, yeah. but he had sent me something of, um, and of course, half of our conversations, it's, it's all potty humor and porn and stuff. But there was some, there was something of like a porn star. I don't know if y'all know who Bella Donna is. I think she retired. She's like one of the nastiest bitches of all time. And like, uh, 
Old B D, man. Oh, just <laughs> what's that? Old B D. Old B D. Dirty, dirty bitch. <laughs> And there's like, there's a thing. I mean, this is like nothing new with porn stars. I guess you, the, you could do it with Cox or the little, I've never, <laughs> proud, I'm proud to say I've never owned a rubber doll or a pussy pocket or any of that shit. I don't even know what, how that, what any of that is, but like, you know, you can order all these things. Right. And and there's this one of her where it's like, her, <laughs> this is the funny part. It's like a mold of her, like her butthole. And so like, you know, so you can fuck her ass. But but here's the, and he sent it to me. It, the funny part is, it's like it's got these fake hands, like like spreading the butthole. I'm just like, I'm like and those fucking fingers are creeping me out, dude. You're trying, you're trying to fuck this thing with these little fake mannequin hands on. It's weird, dude. That's some weird shit. So I ordered it, but yeah, we'll. I'll let y'all know how it works out. <laughs> yeah. Jesus that's Christ. Hands. Okay, I know you play a blue Les. No, yeah, I think is it a blue Les Paul? I love your guitar; it's awesome. Oh, thank you, man. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's Pelham blue is the official Pelham color. Blue. Um, yeah, that's it's great because I'm a Carolina Tar Heels fan. Um, for college, you know, college basketball, I love watching basketball. Wow, okay. So, um, all my family went there, and it's just kind of something I grew up kind of as a heritage thing. And so, it kind of, it's kind of a little um nod to where I came from, you know. Um, so. I just fell in love with the baby blue color my whole life. And when Gibson came out with that color, I immediately jumped on it. So yeah, dude. Very cool. I've got a, it was, it was such a fluke buy that, uh, I got a, a text from a rep because, uh, I got on with Godan guitars a few years ago. I played yeah, Seagull dude, Acoustics. Great. Yeah. I played Seagull Acoustics and always raved about them for years. I finally got with the company and I love them, man. And, uh, and, uh, so I went to get, uh, they had some that they were kind of getting rid of or, or had, you know, I, I could get for cheap over at, uh, yeah, what is that place? It's a big rehearsal place up north. Sound, sound check, right? Is it sound check? Yeah. Sound yeah. Check, yeah. It's sound check, right? And I've rented some gear and stuff from them before. They, this beautiful Seagull acoustic that while I was waiting, cause my, I had a Seagull guitar that got stolen, unfortunately, that I had for years, a few years ago. And so while I was waiting for them to send me one, and it was super gracious to them, um, they, they gave me a loaner from Soundcheck, right? And I loved it too. And so then I took it back and I was like, God, man, I just, I really kind of just, I want that guitar still, <laughs> yeah. even though I got this other one. And so then I went back there because they had some, some, I don't know what, you know, stock they were, you know, getting rid of or whatever. And so I got an email of like some options and stuff. And so I went and I saw, I didn't, anything that I actually was on the list, I think maybe I got one of those guitars. They played like 10 guitars. And then they had, that Seagull Acoustic, the one that I had had as a, a loner, and I was like, fuck, dude, I'm going to buy that thing today. And I got that, oh, wow. and then I got a, um, I got a, uh, oh, it's this, actually. Nice, man. Yeah, that's the that's the acoustic that I got. But then, uh, very nice. another one was this, um, and this is, the, I've never had one of these F-hole guitars. It was a blue, like, with F-holes and that whole jazzy, you know, what's the Gibson, uh, I always forget the name of it. The what's the uh, there's a what, 335 335 uh, yeah that kind of style yeah. right and I was like oh yeah, fuck dude it was just I was like what's the deal with this and I could tell like the the tech guy or like, this guy was like oh yeah so and so has been you know just polished that up and did whatever and and I was like tell me more <laughs> and he was just like oh man I, I think I think I like ruined somebody's day because it was like a, a guitar that he was like oh man yeah this, I like to mess around on this one but dude yeah I, I love it dude and um the color it's the, that's one thing i really liked about it was this unique color you know i thought you don't yeah. see them too often and i think it's um at your like the first time i saw you play obviously you're a great player i think it was at one to one and um cool. but that guitar too is just such like it's a very uh it caught my eye like, i remembered that guitar so i think it's cool you know what i mean for that reason man that's that's good to hear dude yeah it's it's a great guitar i mean it's got the split coil pickups you know you can you know so if you pull up uh the volume knob yeah um yeah, you can kind of sounds like Stratty almost, you know. Is that a um, tweak that that you did, or was that uh, you bought it that way? It came stock like that. It's a it's a really? traditional pro Les Paul, yeah. And that's cool. that was another feature that I really like thought would be kind of cool. Um, that Gibson was running for that year, and um, what, yeah, what year it's is like, that? Number one. It's in two thousand thirteen. Okay. <laughs> um, and uh, I got it for fairly uh, fairly cheap for you know for Gibson standards, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, it's definitely my go-to, you know, that's my number one. And my, my second one is the Les Paul that it's an SG Les Paul. It's a white, 
um, with three three pickups. So yeah, dude. The where did you get those guitars? Was that uh, like here in town? Oh, dude. Um, the Gibson by the Blue Less Paul is from musician's friend. <laughs> Believe it or not, really? I want to have wow. I'll have some great story about it. Yeah. But to be completely honest, yeah, that's where I got that from, and it just came. Um, I've done some tweaks to it and stuff, of course, you know, but, um, I love the fretboard cause it's like a baseball bat kind of, um, neck and real, the, like real you know, thick wide fretboard. Yeah. 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 And it's, which is how nylon string guitars are, you know, getting back to kind of where I started. Yeah. On guitar. Yeah. Makes sense. <clears throat> yeah. So it's just kind of, it's, it's just feels really good that way. And, um, but, uh, I recently got this baby. I got this, uh, it's a, um, <laughs> I had to do it, but um, Jimmy Page came out with a signature Telecaster. Holy that, shit! Uh, yeah, man, it's pretty. It's pretty cool, dude. Like you can see in the back, wow. his uh, you know, he's got his signature there on the oh, back. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, it's it's a really beautiful sounding guitar. It's I've been really having a lot of fun with this, and this was the guitar that uh, Jeff Beck gave to Jimmy Page, um, and then Jimmy Page put mirrors on it. It's called the Mirror Guitar. And um, he then put the dragon uh, design on it. Mm. Um, and it's all of what you hear on Led Zeppelin 1. And like the. Wow. You know, I don't think of either of those guys playing tellies. Like that, so. Yeah. I always think Les Paul and, and Strat, you know, Beck Strat and, yeah. and Jimmy Page Les Paul. Man, I love tell. Yeah. Was that your only telly or do you have any more of those? It is, man. I've, I've always wanted to tell it. I just was waiting on the right time to get one. And um, it's great, man. I mean, just the it's got a very very really full tone really full sound to it um so and how's how's the neck on that one is it fat so this is a this is an oval shaped neck actually um so it's and it's got it's just really cool you know it's got like those really old school kind of tuners on Mm -hmm. it you know um and front loader if you want to for the putting the strings in and um but yeah the the neck is a lot different i'm getting i'm sorry i still have to get used to it Cause I'm used to the, the Les Paul neck. So I'm yeah. still like trying to get my fingers around this neck, but, uh, you know, slowly, but surely. So yeah. I know they're all, they're all different and I don't know a lot about them. I, I, as a general rule, I really, really love Telecasters. I, I love most things Fender anyway, but, um, I, yeah. and I, but to this day, it's so bizarre. That's it's, I don't have a Telecaster and I, you know, I have the Strat and the Les Paul kind of thing and love them both. Um, <clears throat> but, yeah, but I've never had a telly and I've played, there was one telly I played in particular, and if I had had the money to do it, I think it probably would have been an impulse buy that day. Where it, it had a really fat neck, but I love the way it felt, man. It was uh, it was really interesting, and I'm not sure what the model or anything was, but yeah, nice. there's something about those guitars that's just like every guitar, right? I mean, they have their own style. Mm-hmm. For me, it's like I started. I actually had a fairly heavy Washburn, which was one of my earliest guitars, and then I had like an Ibanez and that kind of stuff. And the first time I played a Les Paul, I was like, whoa! <laughs> yeah. Like when the first time you pick up a Les Paul, you're like. Oh, like this is different. I know. I love it. I yeah. love it so much. I'm a, I like heavy guitars, like for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love that. I mean, the ones from the 70s, you know, they're just like bricks. You're just carrying a brick, you know, like some of those Les Pauls, you know. Um, they make them, you know, talking about our, you know, we're a new generation, you know, it's kind of soft, you know, like they got to make the Les Pauls all light now, you know, so they don't, they're not too heavy <laughs> on the shoulder, you know, <laughs> like. But that's kind of how my Les Paul is. It's a little lighter, but it still sounds good. But if you put on a guitar, if you put on my Les Paul and then you put on a Joe Perry, you know, from the 70s Les Paul, it, it will break your back. Yeah. You know, and he would play that thing night after night. He's okay. You don't need a nice, you know, lighter Les Paul. He's not a pussy, man. <laughs> now, look, I'll say that. And then on the, but I'll, on the very, in the very next sentence, I'll say, man, it is nice if you have a Kemper or something, you don't have to tow it around a gun. My, my thought on that though, is yeah. like, if you don't have roadies and shit and you're fucking going and playing some small club and whatever, and you can get a pretty good tone, fuck it. Why not, man? It's easy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Nobody wants a full stack set up at fucking headhunters anyway. Right. So it's like, but if you're doing something legit and it's like. I don't know. I think I think certain venues and certain cir- circumstances like kind of have a deserve maybe your coveted rig, right? And this and that. But yeah. but think of how many great players, you know, through history really they just play little combo amps anyway. What what what's your gear speaking of which? Dude, what I do is um for like club gigs, I'll I'll just pull out the Super Reverb. Mm-hmm. Um it's a 66 Super Reverb I got from this guy in North Carolina. He was just sitting in his barn. And, uh, 
So it's a great amp. Those amps are built like tanks, you know. It's I've had it serviced a bunch of times, but um, it's my my go to for like clubs, you know. And then I if I'm playing like bigger venues, I'll match it with like a Fender cab um, I got from Eric Johnson. And then um, I have a hundred watt Marshall uh, that I have a um, it's a Plexi Super Lead. Oh, okay. Uh, that goes with it, um, fifty nine hand wired and wow, it's it's a great combo. So like for bigger gigs, I'll go with all of those. Um, all three of those all together, you know. Um, yeah. And then so just a, to, a B Y between stuff, like depending. Yeah, on. yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll I'll run it. Um, you know, basically to where everything is just going to be the same. I mean, just and uh, you can just feel the base, you know, of, of it all. You know, I'll have, you know, uh, just running one cable out of the stereo left, and then one out of the right going into the super reverb that's matched with the Fender cab, and then the other one will go to the Marshall. You know. Um, so I, yeah, those, um, I love those old amps too, because and that that's one thing I, I don't like about, cause it's so easy to go down a rabbit hole and I don't kind of don't want to, I like things simple, like turn it on and it yeah. sounds fucking great. And then if I want a little of this or that, I can adjust it or use a pedal or whatever, but having yeah. that basics, so that's, what's great about a nice, uh, great tube amp is just that you got tone, right? And those are yeah. simple, right? Like there's some, some of the Marshalls in recent years and there's a zillion knobs. I'm like, an uh, for, that's I love Mesa. It's great stuff, but a lot of the heads, it's like four channels and this option and that option. I'm just like, I remember I was like shopping amp shopping several years back, and uh, I was like, I ended up getting a Rivera knucklehead uh, that uh, used, which was pretty. I love nice. that amp, yeah. And um, but I looked at a lot of stuff and some Marshall stuff, and I looked at a lot of Mesa stuff, and there was a lot of options that I was just like, too, I don't want all those options. <laughs> like yeah. a Plexi's like dead simple, right? Like what's on a Plexi? on the front it's just it's it's presence treble bass or treble mid bass then you have your high gain knob mm -hmm. and then you have your uh you know the it's your low gain knob and i like to use the low one kind of more and you you can blend them you, know, you can cross patch them um and uh that thing puts out, man. I mean, that's what I did for the Texas Rift Challenge. I busted out the Marshall. That's for that badass. One. Like you came um, with the tone, man. Damn, dude. Yeah, that's, dude. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's awesome. Um, but it's 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 great. I mean, I put really where I where you really I could really hear the difference of sound is I have some um, Celestian Cream backs. With mm. C cream, cream. Those are seventy five uh, watts, right? Yep. I love the cream back. Like they the cream backs are the twenty fives, but those cream backs are the shit, dude. And recently, yeah, man. like, yeah, you know. I love them, dude. Yeah. Yeah. So I just, they're just, oh, they're just, they're fun. You know, yeah. that's the only way I can kind of say it. they're just fun. So, you know, I, I, hopefully I can start using that amp more and more, you know, as things progress, you know, cause when you really open up that, when you really open that amp up, it's really, really, yeah. it's great sounding, you know? So, yeah. Cool, man. What about like, yeah, uh, cool. any, uh, um, pedal board stuff do you do you have a lot of different stuff going on or or what what are your absolute yeah, essentials for pedals um man i i just picked up this really cool uh it's called a vibro um it's you know chorus vibrato you know univibe kind of sound and pedal and it's made by this company shanai here in austin hmm. and it's literally the closest sound to like a 60s univibe that you could get to hmm. um and i had a good buddy of mine carson brock he's a phenomenal guitar player here in town i think he I, wired yeah. For me. yeah i know that that name yeah dude um i was hosting a monthly guitar jam at one two one he was a guest and he was like hey man let me build you this pedal and i've been having a really a lot of fun with that one and you know and then from there uh you know i have a 535q cry baby wall you know you have got to have that and um i have a chorus um mxr analog chorus i love my M mxr analog delay pedal um and uh is that the little carbon the, the little one that's yeah uh, the carbon copy yeah I got that. Yeah, the yeah. green one. Yeah. And then of course a the theremin, dude. You gotta have a theremin. Oh really? Is that yeah, dude. is that standard stuff? Yeah, dude. Yeah, Mo, they're they're uh their factories in my hometown in Asheville, so I always like ah, to show them a lot of love. So okay. yeah, dude. So yeah, what are about you? you? What the hell are you using? <sighs> Nothing for a long time. Man, I've jumped. I have, I have jumped around so much for a little while. I actually bought a oh god, what's it called? The Alesis G three something or other little rack thing. Okay, I, that was fun ish. Um, I mean, cool. I got honestly, I got the Lion Six delay, and I I really like that thing. It's got a lot of different yeah. options. 
I've gone through. I've played every wah under the sun, but I've got this real McCoy wah that's pretty badass. Yeah. Um, I think that's by Vox. I used to have a Vox that I loved. That, but it, and I've got a crybaby too. I just don't use it as much. And I, I've I've had Morley's, all kinds of wahs. Um, nice. The, actually, the bass wah. I think the crybaby bass wah is amazing, even for guitar. Mm. I used that for years. Um, but I love cool. this wah. And I had a I had a Vox, but it used to just pick up radio stations and shit all the time. And it was just I couldn't use the goddamn. Oh no! Thing. Yeah. Spinal Tap style. Spinal Tap, totally, dude. It was oh. bad. I'd be recording <laughs> and it'd be like, what? Yeah, uh, uh, four oh nine or here. You know, it's just like. <laughs> um i've got um but yeah that line six i mean obviously a basic tuner i've got an mxr uh overdrive the boss chorus that's about it right now i i've got a box full of fucking pedals but i'm always like don't have the real estate or i don't have the the balance so yeah oh shoot i know right i'd love to get a couple of a couple of those um what are they called wamplers at some point you know that that company no those things are so, I think, am I saying that right, dude? They're so badass. I played them. I've heard a couple of guys that, for that build pedals that were like, this is the guy. He's my hero. Cool. And uh, I played him at, when I was at Nam and, uh, last, or a couple of years ago or something. And dude, they're, yeah, Wampler is really good shit. That's what's um, up. Yeah. There's so many great pedals out there. You know, I used to have the, I mean, the classic little orange phaser, but I think it's got a short end or something. Basically, whatever, whatever's working is on my pedal board. Um, yeah, dude, tell me about it. Jeez. Are you a guy that's, uh, this? I've asked this question to a few people, you know, because some people like Eric Johnson being, a, we had Dave Shear on here and it was great. It was awesome talking about Eric Johnson and because everybody knows what an absolute freak yeah. he is with tone and, and all the crazy meticulous as he is, you know, and some people I think are, are really like that. And I'm the kind of guy that's. I'm just lazy or, and I don't know, but I, I kind of know like to trust my ears and if something is bothering me and not sounding right. And I feel like I've never achieved like the great, perfect tone, but I know, um, but I don't, I'm not like a gear guy that knows all this and all that. Right. But that you can shoot stuff out all day and, and prove it, you know, but are you a guy that subscribes? Do you have any particular cables that you swear to or that you, or that you use or strings? I know some people are big on strings to me. Like I don't feel like, it makes or breaks my guitar playing, you know, based on a set of strings. Although I am an Ernie Ball guy for years. Oh yeah, dude, I'm I'm Ernie Ball 11s all the way. Oh, your 11s, okay. Is yeah, that 11, so? Is that 1152? Yeah, I think so. I mean, since I was like 15 years old, I've I mean, 16 years now, I've been playing that same set of strings. So that's all I've really known, you know. Yeah, um, yeah, but yeah, I mean. I think so, yeah. Ernie Ball strings to me are like uh, Siegel guitars to me. I think they they're great and they're affordable. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like totally. I don't. I've never seen a reason to, to go spend a shitload of money on some fancy schmancy string set where I'm like, yeah, I can't tell a difference. You know, I've tried. I've got several different Ernie Ball pack. I don't. Oh, I guess you can't. So like, well, my piano back there. There's there's a bunch of different nice. Ernie Balls things, but like. Um, I always just done the, the standard 10 through 46. I tried up into 11s briefly one time and man, it's a, it's a jump. It's an adjustment. It's very different. Yeah, it definitely is, man. I mean, it, you, you get that little extra tone, you know, and you can kind of hat, you can kind of beat up the guitar a little bit more, you know, it's you for got men all, you know. that play old Les Pauls, not sissy, <laughs> not sissy light Les Pauls. Their fingeries. Yeah. <laughs> Poor little fingers. Oh uh, guys now with like that's the funny thing right nowadays your guitar has more strings than your gate and your you know you know like playing an eight string guitar and you're playing an eight an eight gauge string right yep it's like yeah, fucking dude. rubber bands dude even nines it's like i feel like i remember when i started playing like i don't even know if guitars i feel like probably come with stock tens i don't know but i remember playing nines with those flimsy little red dunlop picks those point fives too uh. i couldn't play <laughs> It's the worst. It's a clack, 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 and then everything's bending <laughs> oh. out. Like, you got to have, like, yeah, you got to have some resistance, right? And, like, do you use what what kind of uh, pick weight or what kind of picks do you use? Dude, I use, um, so with acoustic, you know, I'll use medium. Mm-hmm. I'll use medium, um, you know, um, so you can get a nice little listen to the strings, you know. Um, but for electric, it's always heavy. You know, I'll always use heavy. I don't know the exact. Uh, Are those, like, numbers, fenders or something? Or what kind? Or is I that use Cortex. Um, oh, it's Cortex. like a little turtle. Oh, yeah. I like the what color is uh, it? I can tell you what it is. Is it blue? Yeah. 
Dude, they come with green. There's yellow. Oh, you should. Pink. Well, yeah. Blue is. I mean, blue is your color, right? And uh, blue is uh, ones. So that should well, be yeah. Pick. I mean, mm hmm. Yeah, I, I usually like to get the lighter ones because you know when you're on stage, you know, like the dirty dog bar where you, you know there's just like can't see around you. you That's know, a good point. Drop a pick, yeah, you, know, you got to have like a nice yellow pick that just stands out. Like there it is. Yeah, you know. So I usually try to get lighter picks, you know, for that case. But I play higher gauge strings because I play a lot, a lot of open tuning. So ah. you know, I can handle that. So, dude, I was just do I just did a little theme uh, song for someone the other day, and I was like, and I wanted to get like. You know, I wanted like a swampy vibe, right? And I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna oh, do yeah. the, do the whole song for George Double D drop tuning, right? I, that's one of my favorite songs. I love that song, nice. and yeah, uh, that and that that get that real swing, then tune it down a half step, real kind of gross and swampy. And then I was like, okay, now I'm gonna try some slide. Oh, it's so I, playing slide on a normal action guitar is so hard. Like, yeah, it is, man. It's. I know. It do you have? So do you loud. have like a? Do, what do you call them? Dobros? Or do you have anything? Do you have anything set up specific for that? Or do you play much slide? I do, man. On the on this album that's coming out, like there's like a good four or five tracks out of the twelve that I'm using slide pretty heavily on. Sweet. Um, so, yeah, dude, it's been good to get back to doing that. Um, I got a resonator that my guitar tech gave me as a gift, and I love it. I, I play a lot of slide on that, and um, and I have this uh laps it's kind of like a lap steel guitar um that you know it has like three legs to it and um it has like the little piece that you use as a slide that you kind of mm -hmm. pull across where you know? you're sitting down right it's got like little, little pedals like a piano right yeah those things are fascinating yeah, yeah. man like because you can just it's almost like a like a harmonica i i think right like you depending on what you're pushing down and you're sort of creating different triads kind of sort of yeah dude it's, it's some trippy stuff dude yeah it, you get a good player like it's pretty cool sound dude i know lap know? steel players are it, it's fucking amazing um yeah bending the notes man you're like whoa yeah that's, that's good, pretty cool. good stuff dude or you could do it team america style and just do those with your mouth do you know that movie <laughs> yeah. oh yeah dude the fucking uh I used, i've covered some of those songs i love that i love that movie i love that soundtrack everything about it's brilliant but the that song i didn't realize it the first time i listened to it but that song where they're like what would you do you know, <laughs> yeah. something for free. Uh, free buck cost five. a buck oh five. Yeah. If you listen to that song, they've got these like slide guitar parts, but they're doing them with their mouth. It's hilarious. Oh, It'll be like, That's awesome. freedom isn't free. And you just hear like this. <laughs> Don't listen to that, that song, dude. It's fucking awesome. Uh, I'm going to have to check that that's out. Awesome. Yeah, it's, I, was, I, I just was like listening to it when I was like, holy shit. That's like, he's, they're doing that with their mouth. That's hilarious. <laughs> um, Thank you. Yeah. When you play slide, do you, is that, you were saying open tunings. Do you do that mostly open or do you play a lot of standard tuning slide too? Man, um, it's like a mix. So like there's a few songs that we do that are in standard um, that are up on the upcoming album. And then there's a lot that are, there's one that's in like open G, uh, open E. Um, yeah. So it's kind of a mixture of both. I mean, um, I've I learned slide on standard tuning, so I'm comfortable doing it mostly on that, you know, and then then open E I'm most second secondly most comfortable with. So huh, I don't hear a lot about, yeah. about open E a lot. I always think open G is real common for open G and open yeah. D, right? Or a dad gat or what do they call it? Or, yeah. Or, yeah, but yeah, like, man. I always think of like Stones and Keith Richards, right? Doing a lot of open G mm -hmm. type stuff. And Paige, yeah. I mean, so what are some tunings that you use for the Zeppelin stuff? What are some of the page Yeah, so Kashmir is Dagad. Um, the Broniar Stomp is Open G. Um, Rain Song is a really interesting tuning. Um, I don't even know how you would even, it's not even like a normal tuning. Um, Broniar is like an open C tuning, C6 tuning. Oh, like a fucking uh, uh, mandolin. Or not a mandolin, a, a uke, a ukulele. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, what else is there? Uh, shoot, song, in my time of dying is open G. Yeah. That song friends on, um, Led Zeppelin three. Do you know that tune? Yeah. It's kind of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. it sounds like a Lydian thing or something. I, is that like, what is, do you know? What is that going on with that? I feel like that's some kind of different tuning. I don't know if you guys you know. I would have to listen to that, man. It's really interesting, um, man. I love, it's one of my, I, there's so many great Zeppelin songs, but I, I really love that song. Um, yeah, like that's the way is in open G on that album. Um, 
Yeah. Yeah. You mentioned. I could. That's one thing about Zeppelin. I could never like remember what's on what album and what their song titles are. Like they always have oh, like yeah, really weird, yeah. weird song titles and Lord of the Rings yeah, shit or whatever. <laughs> yeah, it's funny when Josh like he always he has he saw as a teleprompter thing when we do shows because he's like, man, I don't know, remember how this like you know Mordor and exactly, yeah, yeah, all these, like, you know, elves and all this <laughs> stuff that we're talking about, you know, nerds. Do, do you Crazy. um <laughs> do you, do you have a favorite Zeppelin album? Favorite Zeppelin album? I mean. I, I would have to say, oh man, it's a hard one. I really, I'm a big fan of physical graffiti. Yeah. I really like physical graffiti a lot. Um, but I also just like like the swagger and the kind of way they came out with Zeppelin one, even though a lot of those were covers. Yeah. The originals and that, you know, I really love a lot. Um, it's really hard to pinpoint like a Zeppelin album for me. Yeah. No, um, it, it, it's so. fair. They're all, they're all so good and they're all different, man. Yeah. There really is. Yeah, it's, like, it's, it's really it, hard for me, man. I don't think there's, there's not really an album. There's, um, I'm trying to think what's, there's one album I'm not as familiar with. Is it called Coda? Yeah. Was that their last, yeah, was that their last one? I think it was. Um, I'm pretty sure that it was their last, their last one. I'm not, I'm not even too like well versed on their discography, but yeah. I think presence maybe our presence, maybe that's it. Yeah. Or, uh, in through the outdoor. Dude, that I love that album. That album kicks ass, man. Um, yeah, so but, Coda was 1982, so um, I think that that was the, the last, last one. one. Yeah, that's the mm-hmm. only one I feel like I don't really. Let's see, there's one, two, three. Uh, what what would you even call Led Zeppelin for? I guess that is they got that symbol on it. Is that just what's the? Is there an official title for that album? No, it's just, I think it's just what? it's. Isn't there something four. like Zozo I mean, or some shit like that? Right? You know what I'm talking? Yeah, about? that each person had their own. Um, yeah, and symbol. And then there and, was. Uh, let's see. And then it was yeah. Houses of the Holy, right? Mm-hmm. I could just Google yep. this. Why am I? Why am I saying my favorite? This? Honestly, if you want to talk about like favorite, like just looking through and kind of refresh my memory, like uh, How the West was won that live album is just so good. Oh, dude, I don't even know that. Yeah, you just you really feel like because Zeppelin was a live band, you know, mm-hmm. like um, just as as much as they Jimmy Page spent orchestrating the songs in the studio, but. Live, you just feel you really feel like the menace of John Bonham's drums. You know, like you just it's. I could just totally really feel that. I could totally see that. I I need to check that out because you're so you're so right about that because it is such a live band and such there's such raw emotion in the in the music, right? And sometimes yeah, I feel this way about like the early Ozzy albums uh, when he went solo with Randy Rhodes, like Blizzard of Oz and Diary of a Madman. Like they're yeah. they're great. Randy Rhodes was amazing. And they were recorded, like, you know, in the course of a few days or a week in like a barn and all this crazy shit. And like, they're great, right? But then, one of my all time like favorite albums that was influential to me early on when I started playing guitar is the live uh, tribute album where they just had a bunch of stuff from that and some Black Sabbath songs that they had played, and they were just on fire. I mean, everything yeah. was just like. There was so you could you could feel all the soul and everybody just going for it. Randy Rhodes was just fucking an animal. Whereas, like, not yeah. to say that the albums weren't good, but they were just kind of sterile. And live, it was yeah. just like that. That's when you really got the sense of just like how fucking good they were. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love those. Yeah, it's just it's like you were talking about with the movie where everything's just right. Yeah. Um, from the the writing to the acting, you know, to the just all parts of it, you know, are you know we're all trying to get to that. Boogie Nights level we're recording it out. We all want a 13 inch cock. Yeah. (laughs) What's this thing that he always Uh, says right in the very end of the movie when he pulls his dick out and he's all looking in the mirror and he's like, uh, he's always saying he's like, because he does like karate and shit and he's like, you're a rock star or you're something. I got to watch that movie again. It's so good. Dude. What are some of your favorite movies, man? Uh, favorite movies? Um, well, I'm a big Denzel Washington fan, so like. Oh, you're gonna love Glory uh, so much. Yeah, like Training Day is one of my all time favorites. Oh, dude, you know? same. Um, yes. You know, Training Day. I love I love movies that are based in one day. So like Pulp Fiction. Ah, yeah. Um, you know, like that. I just love like the progression of the day. You know, from the morning to like just this fucked up scene in the end of the night. You know, kind of like how it all evolved to it. I love movies like that a lot. So. Yeah, I mean, Man on Fire is another one I love from Denzel. Um, 
and uh, shoot. Denzel's got a bu- bunch of really good shit. Man, I, I saw, yeah. um, did you see that movie Flight that came out a few years ago with him? Yeah, that's a crazy yes. one. That was a fucking awesome movie, dude. I really liked that movie. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy Didn't story. He, he admits to it in the end, right? Yeah, he does. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, that's wild. After he went on that huge fucking bender at the hotel, right? Yeah. Remember that? Like the, the next yeah. room had a bunch of alcohol in it. He just got fucking killed. And then uh, John Goodman mm-hmm. shows up and he's like, all right. Here's some cocaine. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, dude. But he saved everybody's life, right? Yeah, dude. Like, and I mean, true story. Like, yeah. pretty, pretty, pretty amazing. Um, yeah, wow. Yeah. There's a lot of. I'm a. I'm a big Denzel fan too, man. And now his son is acting. You know, I remember seeing. Um, yeah. It was what right. was that movie that I think it was a Spike Lee. I'm not a huge Spike Lee fan, but that he had that movie Black Klansman. Yeah. And I remember watching yeah, that and being like. Man, that dude has kind of a familiar sound of voice and even, I guess, the look a little bit. And I was like, is that Denzel Washington's son? And sure shit, like at the end of the credits, it was like, whatever, Washington. I looked it up. I'm like, yep. Yeah. That's his son. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's really, he's he's a great actor on his own. I've, I watched a couple shows that he's been on. So, yeah, that show Ballers. It's a super bro like show that I'm kind of embarrassed to talk about. Oh, no, about, like, dude. Is that the one with The Rock? Yeah. Yeah, dude. I remember Ballers. that show. I I haven't really watched it, but I do remember it coming out and seeing an episode or two of a few years ago. Yeah. Back. Is that still going? No, dude. dude no. The, I kind of watched it secret, but you know. <laughs> that's your that's the, the bro country side of you that doesn't want to let go. Yeah. That's the secret, the dirty <laughs> little secret. Like you like when you get when you get downtime, you don't like masturbate. You put on Florida Georgia line and watch ballers. Like <laughs> Just like oh, it's so, it's so good. He said the word boots yeah. again. They're going mud. This is track four, and they're still mudding. This is so good. <laughs> you know, you know so much about me in these past couple hours, man. You've That's learned right. a lot about. Me. It's crazy, but um. Well, your legacy yeah. will on this podcast will be remembered by you blowing ass in a, in a urinal. I mean, that's- <laughs> Damn it! How much you forget about that? No, about about face Jeez. and blast. Yeah, no, we're just going to chop this thing up. We're going to make it like, we're, it's like going to be like a five-minute podcast, and that's going to be it. It's just yeah, gonna be that's like, amazing. <laughs> so the, the words were from the guy, actually, I'll, I will go back. He walked in the bathroom when he saw everything, you know, and he just said, what the hell? <laughs> just what the hell? Dude, can you imagine, like, but, like, but I love the fact that this whole fucking time, this other dude's just in the stall. Reading a I'll fucking say, newspaper, not giving a fuck while you're blowing ass on a urinal. Like, that's, that's the guy yeah. that's got problems. I know, man. It's like the guy it, that's taking all the water at HEB. You know what I mean? Yeah, it was. Well, I remember the whole at the water. beginning of the pandemic. Like the, there's those kind of people, right? Look, I know we're all in a crisis right now, and you know, and I and I'm an excessive butt wiper, you know. But like, <laughs> I'm still like, I'm gonna like. I mean, pardon the pun, but the shit's hitting the fan. I'm, I'm still only gonna buy one pack of toilet paper because like, that's yep. the considerate thing to do. You know what I mean? I know. Yeah. They recently had to put a ban or like a provisional thing, you know, just for like, you know, just a couple of days on people for they could only get one carton of eggs and yeah. whatever. Mm-hmm. Just because of all those people that bought two months worth of food for two days. Yeah, it's last- lame, dude. I mean, go to the store and like, I, you know, fair enough if there's enough to go around, buy two cartons of eggs instead of one. Right. Fine. But these yeah. motherfuckers that go in there and then fill their cart with toilet paper and and that kind of stuff, yeah. dude, like that's like you're a lame person, dude. Yeah, that's, you know, we can do it over time, though, you know, like you were saying, get the big gallon, you know, get the big five gallon things. I mean, that's OK if you do it over time. I mean, know? seriously, I mean, like that's all. I feel like that's what I do. And that's like why, thank goodness. Like, I mean, it wasn't like that long, but in a situation like this where you're basically like, you know, I mean, I wasn't leaving my house during during any of this. Right. But like I had enough toilet paper and stuff because I'll go to the store. I don't wait till. I'm down to like one roll of toilet paper typically, right? I'm like, all right, I've still got like a pack, but I'm at the store. I'll buy another pack. And so, you know, I got some. And that way also, if the shit does hit the fan, it's like I don't have to be that asshole who goes to the store and buys, you know, four fucking things of toilet paper because I've already like stocked up. Yeah, I know, man. So People, we'll, we'll man. learn. Maybe we'll learn. Who knows? Maybe it'll just get worse. Who even knows, dude? No, nah, well, everything's going to go to AI, man. Like that's Yeah. I really feel like um it's like 
like I don't know the Terminator scenario. What are one or one or the other or both? It, like the Terminator to me, these sound like kind of legit. So or three scenarios. Right? There's the Terminator kind of thing where AI gets smart and wants to eradicate us. Likewise, like the Matrix, I always thought that was a pretty fascinating thing. The way that we become yeah. fuel for them. I mean, not not the hokiness of you know fighting Mr. Anderson, but the way we're like batteries. You know, like that was yeah. I thought an interesting premise, and then. Also, was that movie with Bruce Willis called like the surrogate or whatever, right? Where you're basically just living an altered reality while you your your body just sits in a chair and living through virtual oh, reality. Yeah, that's right. You know, I feel I like that. like you know those those scenarios seem likely for the next step of evolution for human beings, unless an asteroid hits the Earth and we all you know perish that way. Like it seems like that is inevitable like yeah. to me that's evolution like it's like i almost feel like that's proof of evolution like what we've done and even seen in our short little lifetime and just what's happened in the last couple of centuries with the industrial revolution and technology and technological revolution it's like dude that's evolution proof right there we're evolving into yeah. like people right now people in the 1800s could not even fathom this life can you imagine time yeah. traveling here your head would fucking explode this shit's crazy yeah. you know i mean we're basically kind of doing that shit that was going on in 2001 but it's less hokey you know i mean talking to each other like yep. this and we're almost I at know. a star trek point you know i mean I, that sounds like that's a tough one to swallow like time tra time travel is actually logical though right because if the speed of light and shit you can you can bend time and time whatever but blah 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 but but the whole what do you call the little thing they do beam me up stuff oh What's Beam that? Where you like dissolve and reform and then turn into a fly, whatever oh, that kind yeah. of shit is. That's crazy. <laughs> oh, remember the fucking remember the Mike Pence debate and like all those wonderful Jeff Goldblum memes came from that when the fly landed <laughs> on his head. <laughs> I just oh, remember yeah. that. That was awesome. That was. Oh my god, it was amazing. Oh man, this has been fun, dude. Um, I apologize for not talking about music more, but I feel like we talked about it some. Oh yeah, dude. It's. Awesome hanging with y'all, man. I feel like so. you're you're kind of like, you know, SNL used to have the, I don't know if you guys remember that skip Tom Hanks came on and he was like, oh, I'm, and it's like, oh, welcome, sir. You're in the five timers club because he was one of those guys that hosted all the time back in the day. And he goes oh, to a yeah, secret yeah. little room and it's like Steve Martin and Paul Simon and they're all like these elite. I feel like you're that guy now with this podcast that's in that elite group of the guys that have told the shit stories. So <laughs> oh, dude, well, I'm honored, man. congratulations, I'm honored. man. Yeah. You're one of the, <laughs> yeah, I, the elites. It was a tough call, but I actually haven't been able to tell that story in a long time, and I always love people's reactions to it. So I felt this was a perfect time to do that. So thank you for giving the opportunity. You're welcome. That was a, it was a pleasant surprise for us. I didn't anticipate a, a Jelly Ellington shit story, but hey. Well, you know, we're all human beings, aren't we? are all human we? beings. At, you know? So right now, at least. At this yes. a hundred year a hundred years from now we're gonna be bionic as hell. I don't know what's gonna be happening, but Bionic as hell. That's a good band Bion name. Yeah, right Bionic as Hell is kind of a cool band oh, name. Bionic as hell. Bionic as hell. Oh dude, have you seen Bionic as hell? Fuck yeah. Dude, like the guy tells a shit story bet between every song, it's badass. <laughs> and he sells his plastic cock thing, yeah. at the at the Oh mix. yeah, Booth. they sell cocks and tell shit stories. It's amazing. <laughs> People would be like, is that that fucking asshole from a good Rogering? That sounds dumb. <laughs> oh my god dude uh, i'm gonna have I, i'm really gonna like now i just i really want to have i love having like guest musicians for different things but i want to have you on stage and to really i see i don't know if it'll be disappointing or awesome and i'm gonna be like everyone oh you do it jelly ellington's gonna come up for a guitar solo but then we don't you don't even come out on stage with a guitar you just come up to the mic and tell that shit story and then walk <laughs> off stage <laughs> that'd be awesome i think that'd be fucking amazing actually That'd be so just walk awesome. up to the and microphone like, like okay so here's the deal actually it'll be really it, funny is if you did that and like you took a bunch of time like tuning your guitar like checking yeah, pedals yeah. and shit and then you just tell a shit story and leave the stage <laughs> yeah i just like hand it to my guitar tech like yeah like all pro too like come on stage like yeah your tech hands your guitar like people are all like oh dude this could be badass nope yeah. shit story oh my god <laughs> well you know what if you uh if you got me liquored up enough, man, you know, who knows what will happen. I don't know if I ever reached out to you about Skunk Fest. Do you know about that? Yeah, dude. Yeah, I think you hit me up like a couple of years ago or something about that. I had some kind of conflict. Yeah, yeah. I'd love for you to do that. In the I mean, obviously, it's been postponed forever at this point. You know, we were supposed to have it last year and 
as of now it's pending in August, you know, it's been pushed back three or four times, but yeah, man, in the future, I'd love to have you on that. That'd be awesome. And, uh, I definitely got to come out and check out one of your, your Christmas jams too, dude. Like, uh, I love that you you do that. That's amazing, man. Um, so sorry, I keep fucking interrupting you. (laughs) Oh no, you're good. man. I just, I'd love to come by and check out skunk fest and jam it out come and take it. You've done a couple there, right? Yeah. That's where we're, that's, that's where I've stuck. Cool. I, I love that venue, man. It's yeah. a great place. Great stage, great sound. It's great, man. Um, yeah. in fact, I saw, I've seen you guys there. I've seen dancing days there. Cool. Yeah. I've seen you at, um, one-to-one and I, there was somewhere else I saw you too. Maybe probably empire cool. at one time, but then I saw, yeah, I saw the Zeppelin band up at, um, come and take it. Nice. So people can find you dancing days, obviously the Zeppelin tribute. And yeah, I mean, yeah. you guys are on Facebook and, and, all that I, I don't do you have a website for that band or is that just like facebook and stuff no i mean dancing days really is just kind it, of yeah. fun thing. it's just a fun thing on the side but um you can find all the the tour dates for my project at jelly um you can uh at jelly ellington j-e-l-l-y-e-l-l-i-n-g-t-o-n um on instagram and twitter and stuff like that so yeah, yeah, I didn't mean it to make it sound like that was your your main mo because I know you I didn't know if you had anything that was like tacked on to that like like Jelly Ellington and the shit stories or something like that. Or it's just, <laughs> just, just Jelly yeah. Ellington. Okay. Yeah. The band's just, jelly, it's just Jelly Ellington. Yeah. We're, um, I'm really excited. We're putting out a, um, 12 song. It's going to be a double vinyl. Um, dude, that we're really? Out. Yeah, dude. Yeah. I'm super excited about that. We're put that out this fall. Oh, nice. So yeah, we're, I'm just holding off so we can do like a really like just a proper, like, I was about to say CD release, yeah. uh, out release show, you know, like where we can, people are rowdy, you know, and um, everybody's shitting everywhere, you know. Like, <laughs> like, I, I love that about the, uh, when you said CD release, because I played with this metal band called Runescard, and I remember we, we, we actually, one of the last shows I played was in February. We did it, we did a, a album release show, but it, the, 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 the event and everything was called a CD release show, and I was just like, Psst. yeah. Well, I guess you're selling CDs at the show, but. I, I like, uh, yeah. I think album release is a better, a better title. Um, it's a 2021, but it's better for 2021. You know, everybody's changing their titles and their wording. So we should too with our, from CD to album, you know? Yes. Album all the way. I love the fact this double vinyl, man, that's killer, dude. Um, where are you, so you so do you know where you have, or actually, let me ask you this. Where do you said, is this was that, was that recorded at five one two? It was, yep. And yeah, yeah. We um did it over the course of all of twenty twenty, man. We just awesome. we're like, hey, we're gonna take our time. You know, we were it was nice because I was able to get the mixes back and like you know, those things when you hear back, you know, your your final album, you're like, Oh man, I wish I wish I would have like done that, you know, maybe a little differently. I was able to have the luxury of doing that this past year, which was really nice. So I'm really excited about putting out the music. I so, so understand that, man. I, I've taken like 15 years to, to put, I've got a zillion songs written, but the, the whole recording process and personnel changes and all kinds of bullshit and other pro and all these bullshit excuses I'm making about why I don't put out anything, but I'm, I'm really stoked about, um, the, uh, the next EP uh, that I finally have. That's almost yeah. totally done mixed and everything now. And it, it and what I was going to say in regards to what you were saying was it is kind of nice sometimes when you have something, you sit on it for a while and then come back to it with a fresh perspective, you know? And mm-hmm. cause when you're kind of yeah. just rushing through it, it is what it is. And that's, that's fine. A lot of that usually works out fine and you don't even know the things that bugged you later down the line anyway. Right. But, but it's nice cause I, I was kind of listening to it and I'd put it down or months would go by and kind of get a mix and go, Oh yeah. And then it started going like, I want to put a little organ part here. I want to do a little of this. I want to do a little yeah. that, you know? So it's like, I feel like I've really, like made those songs what I think they could be. And I'm pretty, I'm at least right now I'm pretty happy with it. So I, yeah, it's not a bad thing if you have the time to take, man. So congrats on that. Do you have a, um, who's mastering that? Do I, it was mixed at five one two. Does Omar mix or what? Yeah. Omar does mix. Nice. Yeah. And he, uh, he masters as well. Cool. Um, and, uh, yeah, send up to my people up in New York and, um, it's, it's in the process right now, dude. So of, I'm really excited about of like, you know, uh, of cutting the vinyl or what? Yeah. Yeah. So they're like, uh, they, they send it off to like a plant in Europe actually. Oh. And they, um, they cut it there, then they ship it back. And, um, yeah, we just kind of all work all together on it. So it's, it's, uh, it's going to take a little while. Like it, I'm not going to get it back till September, October. Right. You know, that's what the backlog is. That's how, wow. that's how uh, yeah. popular vinyl is. Can you believe that? Yeah. Like some places are a year out, like, 
Wow. You won't be getting yours, your vinyl till next year. That's, you know? that's so, the way to do it though. These days, uh, man, you know, I think what you're yeah. doing is just like, that's, that's a true, I mean, and that's a true album back in the day. Like that's what it was a fucking record, man. And and so I think it's, yeah, dude. even though we live in this digital streaming age, which is great and convenient and, and I think it's awesome in, in many ways, but I, there's something really, really cool and special about vinyl. And it's great to see that that's still a very legitimate thing. And it's made such a comeback, you know? Yeah, dude. Yeah. It's nice to have something physical, you know, that you can, you can hold, you know? Um, so yeah, that's what I, that I love the, the most and the artwork we're really excited about, you know, like I love artwork on vinyl, you know, it's yeah. like, that's like a piece of art you can put in your house, you know? So, uh, yeah. Cool. Cool, man. Yeah. Okay. So Jelly Ellington, obviously Facebook, Instagram. Uh, did you say there was like a, a website for you or no? Yeah. Jelly Ellington.com. Cool. Easy. All right. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm looking at you on Spotify, man. And I, I remember that song Butterfly. I was in that's a, that was an EP, huh? Yes. Yeah. That was a that was a kind of a little different direction I took um, just from like the classic kind of rock and roll. Um, you know, I, I was working with a producer out of Brooklyn that I'm good friends with. We would work a lot during South by Southwest when he would come to town and um, he's an electronic producer. So we kind of like yeah. got together to South by um, three years ago. And we just wrote that EP that week, you know, and um, then we recorded it later up in Brooklyn. And yeah, it was just kind of a fun thing to kind of do to kind of feed a, a different kind of creative outlet, kind of creative side, you know? Yeah, I remember when you put so, that song out and I heard it, I was like, oh, wow, it was definitely because I it wasn't like the guitar riff thing that I was kind of expecting. Right. It was it was an yeah. interesting, different direction. But uh, yeah, man, but, uh, this this final, this X album is definitely getting back to the you know, everything that I, that I love about rock and roll, classic rock, slide guitar, you know, just guitar solos, riffs, yeah, and man. just beating Les Paul shit storms, you know, yeah. <laughs> there you have it. Me- oh man, yeah. that's the write up right there. Meaty Les Paul shit storm, like <laughs> Jelly Ellington. Uh, yeah. Bionic, yeah, whatever the hell that was. Bionic, bionic as hell. Bionic as hell. The new yeah. shit storm from Jelly Ellington. Awesome, dude. Yeah. Well, shit, man. Thanks for hanging with us. This has been fun. I love it. Yeah, thanks for having me. This is cool to get to thanks really know you intimately and, and to know how much you hate Tiger Woods and shit in urinals. Thanks for sharing <laughs> with us today. Oh, my God, dude. Uh, well, anytime, anytime. And uh, yeah, y'all y'all stay safe out there. Same with you, brother. Cool, man. We'll hope yeah. to see you soon or, you know, when it is safe and congrats with, with yeah. everything you got going and much uh, continued success to you. Jellington. Thank you. Jellington. Yeah, Jesus man. fucking Christ. Jelly Ellington, everybody. On yes. top, podcast number 40 with Skunk Manhattan, Victor Ramos. Until next time, be safe. Wear your mask. Don't be a Ted Cruz dickhead. Love you. Bye. <laughs> All right, y'all.
sunset along this lonesome highway road. The past behind them clouded away as I light up my smoke. My mind's been racing, and it's got me feeling numb. But just cross town, <laughs> I can have me some fun. Cross town. <laughs>